folks. Here we are. We might be drunk. We're back. How the hell are you, good Fatty? Good to see you, man. Good to see you. It's good to be back in the city. Lisa, the guest bartender, is here. Hello, everyone. Looking good. Great Salamata. eyebrows. Sally. You Welcome. walked in. I didn't see you at the cellar party. I saw you across the room. I couldn't make it to you. There was too many obstacles, but you walked in in the Hawaiian shirt looking like a hitman. Yeah. It was beautiful. I was like, <laughs> Salabanca, and I couldn't get to you. Oh, yeah. What the hell of a party? Oh, it was great. I saw you across the room, too, and you were another guy I couldn't get to. <laughs> it's so frustrating. Like, the people you want to talk to, you never get to. Yeah, that's true. I mean, true. obviously, I talk to a lot of people I love, but, th but there were definitely some obstacles in there. Yeah, there's definitely a couple of parasites who are like, hey, and you're like, damn it, oh. I got to be stuck with this queef for six minutes. <laughs> so is that a Christmas party in April? What, what the Passover. The... No, they just always do the holiday party late, because I think their logic is everyone does a holiday party in December. We'll do a holiday party in April. Cause That's a good point. We're not competing with any parties. Yeah, and it's a crazy spread. It's open bar. It's every comic, and you're like, "Whoa, you're still doing it!" You know, <laughs> you always see comics. You're like, "Oh yeah, I forgot about you." <laughs> and uh, yeah, it was fun. Liz there was, was doing there the drinks. Were a lot of those. You're still doing it. Oh yeah, there's a lot of those. How do you pay the rent? <laughs> I have a few comics. I have a list of eight comics. I'm like, how do you pay a New York rent? <laughs> you never do the road. You never do clips or tv or anything but it'd be great if the party was just one giant intervention for a comic like how do you do it yeah please quit wow. they literally came there for the food yeah yeah, yeah. yeah right right <laughs> the food was i mean you got that kennedy fried chicken which, which was a, I'm a, a, a little lukewarm in the temperature i want a uh -oh. hot piece of chicken i was uh -oh. a little upset i oh. still ate it i don't get stereotypical guys mad about the food temp but <laughs> <laughs> it was a little drafty in there but, um, so this may be a little inside baseball but the comedy seller bought the mcdonald's on west third street yeah. that's right. right next to the fat black that was like the world star yes mcdonald's yes totally that was like where every sucker punch was thrown late at night yeah that's right it was a big like drag queen mcdonald's one yeah. comic got beat up by a couple drag queens a few years yeah. ago i remember which uh which who, who got beat up by a drag queen Artie fuqua really yeah he got into it with a couple drag queens he's quick too he, he'd think he'd be able to hold his own well it was like six of them yeah. And it is dudes after all. So Man, that's how that's how progressive New York City is. The drag queens are beating up non drag queens. Yeah, that's right. And they just Oh, here we go. Out. Hey Nimesh! What's shaking, Fatty? Sit Get over, over here. here. We got hey. Hey. Welcome. This is Lisa. Hello, how are you? Nimesh. Nice to meet you. Salacuse. Yeah, good to see you again, man. What do you got a hog out there? It's a city bike, you know? Oh. <laughs> I ride them every the day. The drag queen had the hug. <laughs> All right. Let's, uh, good to see you, man. We just started. Thanks for being accommodating. You didn't miss anything. Well, we got you. Your drink of choice was, I believe, a cucumber gin. Yes, sir. Very, a very summery uh, request, which oh, I appreciate. Yeah. I love a good summer cocktail. Oh, if we're day drinking, I want it to be summer. You don't want, like, I love whiskey. I don't want it at 2 p.m. Yeah. I want it at night. Yeah, the brown liquors, no offense, but the brown liquors I feel like are better at night. <laughs> we drink a lot of brown liquors. <laughs> Us brown people. Oh, yeah. I don't know why we haven't been in a whiskey commercial just yet. Yeah. You guys don't get in that. Why don't you get in those? I think Indian people are ashamed of how much we drink alcohol. Really? really? I think so. I didn't know you guys were oh, we known to be booze bags. Booze hounds. That's why you own all the liquor stores. Ah, good point. Vertical integration. <laughs> <laughs> no need for a middleman. You're Didn't getting you? high on your own supply. Oh, hell yeah. There you go. Uh, that's my first alcoholic beverage was at my, I stole some of my dad's whiskey from his store and I kept it in a garage and I would like eighth grade, ninth grade, I would take a little nip. Oh yeah. And mix it with orange juice and brought it to school to share with my friends. And then I chickened out. I couldn't drink it at school. I, I felt that whiskey was... OJ. Yeah. Oh. That's like <laughs> my not first the, drink. That's not the right combo. <laughs> I don't know what yeah. I was doing, dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just saw my dad drinking. I was like, this must be cool. Damn. Do your dad own a liquor store? Yes, sir. Look at that. It's all locking in. There it is. Do you remember what kind of whiskey it was? Johnny Walker Black. That's a that's a solid whiskey. Yes, but as a kid, you're not. No kid appreciates no. No, no, the no. nuance. <laughs> no, no kid it. is like that's that's a good scotch. I put it right with Tropicana, there. dude. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck I was doing? It's a good year. <laughs> that's when when you're young and you for the first time you get like a good bottle and you and you're too dumbed. You don't know you're supposed to have it straight and you get that liquor snob who's like, "What are you doing?" I know. Yeah. Yeah, we did a lot of uh, country time lemonade and vodka. Oh, that's, that's pretty, that's pretty, that's good, pretty combo, good. It right? wasn't bad, but it's yeah. all sugar. That's a hangover and a half. 
Yeah. Screwdrivers are good. O- OJ and vodka. Sure. When you're a kid, a, a cranberry vodka. Yeah. It's the breakfast drink of alcoholics. I like that we're just telling kids <laughs> what to drink. If you're, <laughs> if you're 13 years old, <laughs> don't waste a good scotch. Yes. Mix it with soda, kids. <laughs> a lot of pop off when you're a kid. What's the, pop the vodka? Off? It's like shitty vodka. Oh, the plastic oh. bottle. No, yeah. we we did uh, all the banana flavored ones, smearing off banana, pine, oh. all the fucking green apple, all that oh. shit. Look. Yeah, so that's what you thought was cool. I know. When you're a kid, yeah. I mean, I feel like that's who's drinking. Uh, what's what's the cinnamon whiskey? Fireball. Oh, Fireball. Mm. If you're an adult and you drink that, you are just classless. Or yes. you're on you're outside of Port Authority. Asking, <laughs> asking In which change. case, you're pretty high class. Yeah, yeah. Right. True. <laughs> I don't like any of those. They got peanut butter whiskey now. I'm like, come on. I tried that on Santino's podcast, and as like it's a pretty gimmick, good. It's, it tastes good, but you're like, you can have one. I no. can't live with myself yeah. drinking that. We, you are, you guys have your own whiskey, right? We do. Oh yeah, it's a ride. Cal- I whiskey. get to have it. Yes, look at that. Yeah. Look at I gotta that. try this. It's Nutella flavored. <laughs> so, dude, I just thought Norman loves Nutella, and I just saw a oh, thing. Yeah. Pull up the Nutella nutritional. This is going to break your heart. Uh-oh. What's in it? It's like the least healthy shit. What? No the, way. The last ingredient is hazelnut. <laughs> right. Oh, no. No, no, but there's like a breakdown of what it, it's like. Really? It's like all sugar and then like a dash of hazelnut. Can you read that like clearly? Because I cannot, and I'm wondering if I should get LASIK. Oh, no, I can't either. I can't see the shit at all. Two tablespoons, two spoons. Two. I don't know. It was on Twitter, so I don't know. Wow, 12 grams of fat, 21 grams of sugar. But it was, like, grosser when they showed the actual breakdown. I believe it. Ah, Nutella, that's my N-word. <laughs> Damn it. Well, you always think it looks, it's, like, expensive and it's foreign, so I always assumed it was healthy. Is it foreign? I believe it's from, like, You feel like you're Denmark. being healthier when you eat, like, a Ferrier Rocher as opposed yes, to, like, a yes. Nestle Crunch, but it's all garbage. It's all garbage, it's all yeah. I think Ferrier Rocher is Nutella. Yes, it's, oh, inside, it's yeah. a hazelnut cream in the middle. Yeah. Yeah, my buddy used to wear the shitty cologne, and he was like, it's Italian. But he still smelled like an asshole. <laughs> <you know? laughs> but it was Italian. It was, it was imported. Man. Man. Bad things, there's bad stuff overseas. Why does imported just sound better? It just sounds, uh, because it's not here. It's like a Cuban cigar. Yeah, because the good stuff is imported, and you assume if it's imported, it's good. But right. bad stuff well, is also, every, of course. Everything's imported. No, yeah. The Chinese, all the Chinese shit is imported. That's, That's a good all point. Bad. Good yeah. point. I had a friend I mean, come over from France, and he only wanted to drink Budweiser while he was here. He's like, this is the good stuff. I was like, it's not the good stuff. Is he trans? <laughs> All right. It's a Budweiser. What's with the Pepto? Oh. This is a drinking pod, and we have weak stomachs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. You oh, dude, yourself? I was- He's got he, an ulcer. Oh, my God. I have stomach pain. I was not made to be a drinker. You got coffee going right now. I know. I, I take horrible care of myself. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of coffee, alcohol, and then, yeah, I got to slip- Pepto, I do a little, I do peppermint pills occasionally. Yeah, so see us on the road now, because we'll be dead in six years. <laughs> Buy tickets. Sl- slippery fucking slope here you guys have set up. This is an afternoon drinking podcast. Yeah, I know, what I you, realize that. You think we're doing well? <laughs> I, that's, that's why I brought my helmet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're going to need it for that bike, bike ride. Home, yeah. <laughs> you're going to get a Dewey. DUI. Uh, should I be wearing a helmet? Because I city bike every day. What? Yes. You don't wear a helmet? Are you, you out of your a mind? city bike? No. What do you mean a city? Yeah, that's like the, you're supposed to wear a helmet at all times, dude. Uh, do you see how people drive in this city and oh, wear a helmet? I've had some close calls. You'll be wearing cabbies. a helmet in no time if you're not wearing a helmet right now. <laughs> Knock off some wood, man. Damn. He was riding a helmet. scooter without a helmet. He was, yeah, but his... you don't wear one either. Yeah, but you're on a motor a motorbike doing it. That's true. All over the city. Yeah. Doing That's 45, insane. no helmet. You should, oh, if yeah. you bike around town, you should be wearing a helmet. Uh, Just it's, not it's for... pretty dorky, but, you know... I mean, it's it even dorky to be dead. Good point. Safety Good point. Is, why is safety dorky? It is, I guess. It just well, looks dumb. There's condoms. No... <laughs> Nerd. There's no cool looking helmets. That's true. You know? There's no, yeah, you but... should get one that says, like, fuck the police on it. You're <laughs> like, that guy's cool. Yeah, that guy's a man. <laughs> Maybe I'll just get one that says, I'm special needs, because no one will fuck with me. Then they'll then they'll make fun of me less. They'll be like, that guy's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's high functioning. You wave to him and smile. Yeah, I am. <laughs> Mark waving. Yeah. Some guy with the cigarettes like, there goes the coolest kid in this city. Yeah. <laughs> play the play the horn on the fucking city bike. <laughs> oh, oh, that's what, okay. We see he's got his helmet. Says why he's doing that. I'm downs with the cause. All right. <laughs> well, you know, in Connecticut they do all these like they, people are always fighting. So they don't have to wear helmets, the bikers. Yeah. But it's like you, riding a motorcycle without a helmet, you're just asking to fucking yeah. die. Everyone yeah. crashes on a bike. So I fell off my scooter. I got knocked out. No helmet. 
construction workers had to bring me to the sidewalk. Really? It was wild, yeah. And yet, you're still not wearing a helmet. Well, I didn't die. How bad was the injury? It was pretty bad. I, I hit a bump, and I flew off the front of the handlebars, and I had gloves on. It was winter, and I scraped them, and they were, they were it was just all skin. Because I scraped the glove off. And you got knocked out. Got knocked out. You have CTE for the future now. Yeah, yeah. No helmet, though. He'll be shooting up a bank in no time. <laughs> <laughs> I wore, the reason I started wearing a helmet is because I got blackout drunk, like, during the summer pandemic. And yeah. I was on a city bike, and I, like, rode home with no, I had my helmet, but I didn't have it on. Oh, boy. And, like, I don't know how the fuck I got home, and that's, like, the scariest thing. Oh. Come home and have your wife yell at you like you could have fucking died. I'm like, shut you. you I like that that's the scary part. Yeah. Your wife's just yelling <laughs> yeah. at you. Yeah. You wish I died. <laughs> Sleeping on the sofa. But you didn't fall. <laughs> no, I did not. I've had I've had two close calls. One where like the city bike gear didn't shift correctly. Yeah. And my shin hit the the pedals and I like flew into a car. Ooh. And and then the second time where I hadn't seen the I was like riding up to where the stop is where you dock your shit yeah mm -hmm. and there was a dip in the sidewalk and i didn't see it because i was just flying at fucking boom right Damn. into my nuts it was ah! brutal brutal luckily luckily i didn't fly over the handlebars that time because that would have been bad but. right damn there's no helmet for the nuts i no. guess there's a cup there's a cup but the cups are dorky too if you're doing you, that then then you, you are a dork yeah <laughs> well, you, like unless you're like playing i guess if you like play baseball or something that you would remember you played baseball you put the cup on you're like, I can't, how do people move in this? Yeah, I only it did it when I was catching. Every other position, it doesn't make sense. You never really get hit in the nuts. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, you have to be asking for it to get hit in the nuts if you're... I mean, it's actually literally nuts out. Yeah, good point. Yeah, it like yeah. goes in the, yeah. in the dirt. Yeah. UFC guys wear cups. Yeah, they have weird cups. Really? They're kind of like yeah, cylindrical. Yeah, because they get kicked in the balls constantly. Not on purpose, but just <laughs> flying on, kicks. Definitely on purpose. Probably, yeah. yeah. Some people fake a nut hit because it gives them five, you get five minutes. So if you're getting your ass kicked and you fake a nut hit, you're like, oh, uh, uh, I'll go over here and regroup for five. And it kind of helps you with the fight. Uh -huh. You've been so, learning these strategies from Rogan, I see. <laughs> <laughs> You've been hanging out with Joe a little too long, man. I, you're I, a UFC dude now. I let him kick me once and it was not pretty. What? He kicks like really? a mule. Yeah. Where? Why would you do that? I just said, give me like a softy on the ass. Uh -huh. And I flew across the room. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't help that he's four foot two. So no, he's, he's got, got like a... Oh, All no, that kid. leverage. Just yes. Like, he's like a little tank. Yeah, it's a brick of a man kicking you in the leg. Oh, yeah. yeah he is like a hard... He's like... A, he's just hard. He's yeah. solid. Yeah. <laughs> he's got a huge hog, by the way. Does he? Huge. You've seen it? saw it at the urinal. <laughs> it was after you got kicked in the ass. Yeah. He's like, All right, Mark. <laughs> he's like, this will make you feel better. Yeah. Huge. I don't know what's thicker, his dick or his neck, but... Uh, Damn. Large, uh, large piece on the guy. Both are holding up a big head. <laughs> it says on it. On the side. <laughs> What's that? Oh. Hey, yeah. cocktail. Cocktail Come time. On, Lisa. Oh, you drink with the guest drinks? Of course. Oh, that's amazing. Not always. I think recently I did. Every once in a while we said, it's good to drink the same yeah. thing. Yeah, For camaraderie. Not? Gracias. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. So yep. this is, a, so it's just gin and soda with the muddled cucumber cucumber. garnish, or is there a cucumber flavor? It's muddled in. There? in. It's muddled Ooh, in. Muddle. Love a muddle. Ooh, this is my drink of choice. Squeeze of lime and gin. Thank Beautiful. you very much. His muddle was a mudder. Yeah. <laughs> hey. Hey. Cheers. Muzzle. Hey. Thanks for coming. Cheers. Oh. Hey. Cheers. Oh, all good. Damn, that smells nice. Mm hmm. Mm. Ooh. Mm. That's a good summer drink. It goes down easy. Oh, yeah. I'm, Too easy. I'm going to be cursing at immigrants pretty soon. <laughs> this, is, this is a drink. Join the party. Mm. I remember when Nimesh used to run that hot show, Bar Matchless, with mm. Michael Che. And uh, Mike Denny. Don't and forget, Mike Denny. Don't forget Denny. As well. I'm sorry, Mike Denny. Hope you're doing well. There you go, Denny. And, uh, <laughs> and, we, and we would do that show. I remember we would get wasted at your oh, show. That, those... that was like the show. I remember one time I got taken out i was so drunk the bartender removed me in a headlock oh really yeah and, and I, I only remember this because you text me mm -hmm. you go man you looked rough last night <laughs> like the one person who checked in on me oh i'm sorry man I'm i don't know what i did to get taken out but it was probably bad they had a they had a pretty high bar to get removed so you yeah. must, <laughs> must have been done some wild shit especially with che che was fall down drunk every week yeah we were we were drunk pretty often and uh i, I was funny you were just I was just thinking about matches the other day because I was in Greenpoint and walked past it. Yeah. I was like, it's gone. 
Is it? It's like uh, been demolished. Now they're putting what? up. Yeah, I mean, it's, they're putting up high rises or that was a or great condos. Bar. Yeah, best yeah, bar, like a classic the neighborhood best bar. bar. Yeah, I mean that, that area was like when Williamsburg kind of becomes Greenpoint. Yeah, and it was a cool. It was a, Greenpoint is still kind of cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Polish not, have held on. Yes, Those they're bakeries? still there. Yeah. Holy shit, they're so good. Wow, that's gone. We used to watch Lost there. Remember when Lost was a thing? We'd all go and watch Lost on the really? big screen really? and get drunk. Yeah. Oh, no, that's no. an underrated thing. It's like I love my favorite thing is in the playoffs when they you go to a bar and the sound is on. Oh, oh the best. That is the greatest thing. That's a big New Orleans thing. Where are you watching tomorrow? Uh, I'm going to be in L.A., so I'll be watching in L.A. Oh, I actually okay. just had to move a podcast because with the time change, I didn't realize that it was a Knicks game. Because <laughs> yeah, I scheduled it like weeks out, and I was like, fuck, the Knicks play game two. Yeah. And they completely understood. I could have made up a different excuse, but I was like, it's game two, and they're like, we totally get it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm surprised not going to Cleveland. <laughs> it would it'd be fun to go. I did someone's radio show, and he was like, "I thought you'd be at the game, and he, there you're just at home with Stavros, just screaming at a TV." And I was like, "It's in Cleveland. Nah. I think I just travel with the team. Tickets right. are probably cheaper. They are definitely cheaper. You know, you're yeah. gonna go on Thursday, is it? I'm gonna be on the West. You're Coast. still in LA. It's Goddamn. Yeah. Sorry. How much is that average playoff tickets for the Knicks? I think it what well, depends. Sam's right. got it. <laughs> That's the hardest working man in show business, right? You too. Hey, hey. both of y'all. Oh well, wait a minute! Back to Matchless. Mm. Yes, I, it's sad it's gone. Oh, so yeah, many man. good times. You were giving out those drink tickets like there was that's no what tomorrow. it was. Yeah, I mean we. It yeah, you're the reason it closed. <laughs> <laughs> every Monday night we we drop like a twenty dollar tip at the bar and be like yeah. that that should cover everybody for the entire <laughs> night, right? Well, well, that was the only bar where you'd use a drink ticket and they'd give you top shelf. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> every other bar they're like, this is for well. It, imagine you're drinking. I'd get a Johnny Walker Black and Orange yeah, right there. Fuck, great. dude, it was the best because yeah. like those, those bartenders were there. Like when it was like three people in the room, so when we got to you know what it became, when you guys were doing it regularly, yeah. it was like they saw us grow. From, they became friends with all those people, Sarah and Mel and Arm and all them. Like and this, so they were just like, yeah, just get fucked up. We don't give a shit because before Monday nights when we were doing it, they had nothing going on. There. Nothing. That bar would have closed a lot sooner had That's we not true. been there. I yeah. think. Well, no, you brought in a lot of people for yeah. sure, and neighborhood people, which is good. Yeah, it's good when it becomes like a neighborhood thing. And Monday nights, man. Started with Hannibal, right? Hannibal at it first, then gave ha it to you. No, Hannibal. No, he had Knitting Factory. Hannibal had Knitting oh. Factory. No, Hannibal had done a show there. This That's is, what it was. Hannibal had done, had done a show there, uh, and I think he did one or two there, and then I think he moved to Knit after that or something. Mm. And then uh, Denny had. Uh, a show in the basement of a bar, uh, in the basement of a FedEx, called uh, Illegal FedEx. And, ah. and we were in there for like three or four episodes of Broken. And then somehow he found that bar and we're like, all right, let's do it there. And it became just like uh, more like we will build this as opposed to, oh, okay, this is going to be like, uh, um, like a chore or anything. Be like, we were super excited to make it something out of nothing. And yeah. you know, two years in at that right. point. Right. How else do you find stage time? You guys had a hot show. What was it? In I had a couple different locations. We had I when I first was starting, I had a show in Times Square called Sage Stand Up, and it was killer like, show. That was a good show. That was like a better show than we were. Yes, when yes. You, you know start? what I mean? When did you start? What year? Uh, yeah, a long time ago. Um, I, don't I was oh nine. Yeah, uh -huh. I was before that. It was yeah. like it was uh, that was like a Times Square hot show, mm -hmm. and then there was uh, we moved it to a, a venue called Hurley's, which is like where Johnny Carson used to get fucked up. It was oh, like, really? It was, yeah, it was like a classic old school bar, but uh, they they were such assholes to us at Hurley's. It was a bummer because it was, but then that was back when like Times Square was still good for comedy in mm -hmm. a weird way. Where you, the because we would hand out flyers and create word, and it was like people would walk in. They would just walk in. Yeah. So you'd get a lot of randos. Right. Now I feel like Times Square is terrible. Terrible. Just, you know, but, uh, and then after that, the last one was Bar 82. Oh, that was a hot that was, one too. That was a, it was another cool bar that closed down. Uh -huh. it was East like Village. A, yeah, it was like a grimy, cool, old school. I don't Looked like where they would like shoot a Cassavetes film or something. Like yeah. Dingy and I feel like I've done a show at Hurley's. I don't know if it was your show. It definitely wasn't your show. I don't it think. might have been my show. That's mm. where I became friends with a lot of people. I mean, I feel like that's where I became like closer friends with like Joe List and Dan Soder. Uh -huh. Like they do your show and you start having a drink and hanging out. Back when oh, they yeah. were still drinking. 
Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's a long time I ago. I just realized both of them have quit. Wow. <laughs> Bargazzi. Bargazzi was legless every night. <laughs> Good times. And you did Hot Soup. Was that, uh, what was the one on 14th Street? I had with Andy Haynes, Matt Ruby, Gary Veter. It was on O'Hanlon's on 14th yes, Street. Yes, that now, was a fun one. Big booze. Booze night was every Friday night. Mm -hmm. And then we got kicked out of there because we they caught us sneaking in booze. Then we went to... <laughs> I remember sneaking in booze to that place. Why did you sneak booze in? I don't know. We couldn't afford it. Yeah, we don't want to pay for booze. Got it. Yeah. We, I remember bringing in like a Dasani bottle full of bourbon. Yes. And just everyone taking a swig of it and being like, wow, we're fucking trash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the move. <laughs> bringing, well, they probably wouldn't have charged us either, but maybe I think they'd maybe they give probably you one for did. one. They probably did. Yeah, I think that's you why guys. you sneak it in. They were probably charging. Yeah, yeah then we moved to Irish Exit. That, that was the show. Yeah. That was the show. I think uh, for me, like, oh, I got, I respected you and Gary a lot and yeah. Ruby, and I was like, I gotta go do this show. Everyone's fucking doing it, and oh, I yeah. popped in, and I was like, God damn, like, this is how fun a bar show could be, and we were just in a tiny little stage, yep, in that back room. It was kind of a perfect back. setup for comedy, but it, terrible location for comedy, but it works. It was some East reason. Side, Midtown, yeah, area. and you got a lot of East. East Side Midtown people. It yeah. would be like finance bros with their like dates, and you just talk. But they were shit good. To, yeah, they were fun. They had, a, oh, they had yeah. a lot of fun there. Remember Phoebe Robinson had that showcase in the Mondays. Oh yeah, and, and it was literally a it was a hostage situation. Every <laughs> week, you were just Where going. Was it was in Midtown. That's why I thought of it. But it was uh -huh. like in the forties on the East one. Side. And I remember you'd go on stage, and every night it was a. It was a hostage situation. <laughs> yeah. She'd get on stage and be like, all right, you guys ready for comedy? People would like turn around. They just got off work and they're like, no. no. <laughs> and that would be the show. I remember bombing for like, it was like four people in the crowd and they were all kids that went to Tulane, I wish I went to Tulane. Ah. Uh -huh. And they all, like I all told them I'm leaving school to pursue stand-up. This is where they see me, a four-person crowd of only them. And I just bombed for no. four people. No, what are the odds? Who I just told I was pursuing my dream to, and they're like, Damn. well, clearly this isn't working. This isn't going to work out for you. But that, that, was, that show was rough. Rough. That would be like, hey, can you turn off the hockey game? And they'd go, no. <laughs> <Just keep laughing. laughs> Get funnier. Yeah. <laughs> Brutal. The, the best show, I mean, the the best show that I bombed at when Jared had you were there, it was I Jared. Know, I've seen you bomb quite a bit. Yeah. No. <laughs> there's been a lot of bad shows I bombed at, but the best show I bombed at was Jared had a show in the Upper East Side. Remember Stumble In? Yeah, in the back room when we were doing room. the J Train shows. Oh yeah, it, like those were like when we start when because he was uh, we started almost at the same time, maybe a year late. He started maybe a year later. And he was like, I know how to make a lot of friends. And he was working at a at a as a at a financial advisory shop or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so he had this huge like roll call of people, and we'd go upper east side. So funny that he used it for stand up. I mean, oh yeah, it, yeah. It, it, a huge network, and it was like all people his age, our age, smart, popping, fun. First show I did, I crushed. I was like, oh, this is awesome. Second, he did a, a week later, it was me, you, Che, yep, and a few other people, and. I went up and I did basically the same set I had done the week prior. Ate a fucking monster dick. Was it the same crowd, I guess? I'm not sure. It was the same type of people. I don't uh -huh. remember seeing the same. Uh, Interesting. I ate such a fucking dick. And then I think Che went up after me. You had went up You went up before me. Uh -huh. And you destroyed. I went up, ate a dick. Che went up afterwards. He struggled a little, I think, too. No, he, he struggled right after, a little bit right after he opened. Oh, but he yeah. opened with like, he was trying to defend me. He said, uh... <laughs> If you wanna if you wanna try stand up, go on stage and pull your dick out and for whatever reason that like ripped the room oh, open. Oh wow. And then he went up and, and did his thing. But I remember Isn't it funny how you remember every detail of these bombs? The bombs Oh my god. Like I was that it was at that show I decided I would never do that material ever again. I was like, Wow oh. Because I realized you we and I talked about it and it's like that the bit I was doing is about like carrots and celery and shit and mm -hmm. it's a really stupid, silly bit that required a lot of momentum. And if I didn't have it at the beginning, uh -huh. it was just going to be me bombing for three minutes because you couldn't get out of the bit. You yeah. Know? And I didn't have the chops to be like, oh, I should abandon this motherfucker at this point. And Interesting. Just, There's no worse feeling than when you're in the middle of a bit that you know is long. Yeah. And the, yes. first, and the beginning yes. is bombing. Start, you just start sweating like, oh, man. You're trapped. <laughs> it's worse. Yeah. I, it happened to me. I did a private event uh, last week. And, and it, mm -hmm. was, <laughs> it was a pretty damn rough set. It's one of those sets where you're like, I'm thinking about shit I'm going to buy with this money that you're making me fucking suffer. Yeah. <laughs> so, what what but, type of crowd was it? 
meathead-ish. Uh-huh. And mm, what uh, was the, Jeselnik what? was on it too. Okay. I didn't catch a set. I was like, I'm out of here. But they did not seem good. What was the, and, what was it? Was it a corporate event? Was it, it was some guy's birthday. Oh, shit. But yeah, and I remember leaving. Uh, I was in the middle of a bit that I knew I probably shouldn't have done it. But you just want to do your newer stuff. Of course. of course. So I did. I open. I go into it and I'm like, it was I had the trap door out of the bit because I was like, this isn't. This is like a five minute bit, and uh-huh. it's going to fucking bomb. Yeah, I was like a minute in, I was like, fuck this. You so can I, feel it. I bailed on it, uh-huh. and then uh, just yeah, you had to. I mean, it's like it's. Good I'm gonna, call. I'm gonna eat it. Yeah, you had, you had the professional awareness, like, oh, this is gonna be poor. I, you know, two years in, you're just like, oh, this is. I'll find a way out of this. Did not. There's yeah. no worse feeling than when you go. I mean, there's worse feelings, but like as a performer, when you go on and they're just talking. Oh yeah, and you're like. What do you? Th- what am I a fucking magician? I need your uh, awareness. I, I need something. And, and then they go, ah, "You're not funny." I'm like, "Well, you have to listen to the setup, right? Yeah. How would I be? How am I going to get a laugh if you don't hear the setup and the punch? Yeah. I hate that. No, it was, it you was can't, a bomb. You, you can't even. I've been in a situation where you can't be like, "Will y'all shut the fuck up?" I know because it's there, there for them. Exactly. I know. I did a charity like last year, a year and a half ago, and I was supposed to headline. I was headlining it, and like two other people went up, and no one was paying attention. And the people that invited me were like the heads of the organization sitting right next to me. They're talking. Yeah. The whole group is talking. I'm just trying to be like, at like, I'm supposed to do 30. I did like 18. And at one point, I just told like the biggest sponsors of the event to shut the fuck up. I was like, yo, <laughs> listen, y'all need to shut the fuck up. I'm not going to lose confidence in any of this material. Yeah. I'm not the one doing poorly here. You're supposed to be paying attention. And I just sweat through the whole fucking thing. And then afterwards, the organizer was like, yeah, that was really good. Ah. I, I was sorry that everyone ah. was tough. I was They're like, like yeah. that carrot salary material should have worked. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, I, so many it's, bombs. It's so demoralizing, those corporates. When they're talking, they don't pay attention. You're like, I'm getting a lot of money, but yeah. why'd you book me? I you, know. What, what, what that's what really what it here? is. You're like, you just have to accept that you're like, this isn't yes. this isn't me being an artist. This what? is yes. this isn't I'm not even an entertainer here. I'm a monkey. Yeah. I'm exactly. nothing. I'm, I'm what does it matter if you do well there or don't do well there? It's literally just, just a paycheck. You just, yeah, you just, you just are like, oh man, I love this, and I feel, yeah, this is look, world's smallest violin here. That, come on, it's right. not that big a deal. But, uh, but you, you leave feeling think, like shit. I'm always thinking yeah. about what's the opportunity I'm gonna get out from this. That's mm. that's always in the back of my head. I'm like, there's always other people at charity events that are like, oh, he did great that's at my true. event or you Mike. Know, well, maybe we'll book him for that, and then you just eat a dick. It's like, well, that guy fucking sucked. Yeah. You know, Jonathan Katz used to have a great joke where he'd say, I'm doing a benefit next week for the survivors of the week I did the, for the benefit of the week before. The, <laughs> that's pretty oh, good. That's funny. funny, but it's a great joke. But uh, <laughs> He's a funny guy. He's a funny guy, dry. Very dry. Mm-hmm. So I got, I got shouted out by Seinfeld, and that year nice. I got like, a million corporate gigs because uh-huh. they're like, oh, Seinfeld likes this guy, and I bombed at every one of them. They hate it because, you know, my act is like, so what's up with uh, Puerto Ricans or whatever? And people are like, whoa, we got HR here. What are you doing? You're the Seinfeld guy? Yeah. I got 12 minutes on squirting. <laughs> they weren't having it. I've only I've done like five corporates, and they've all been like, four of them were great because they were booked through like the I used to work for these people. Oh, that and helps. So I come do our event. Like, we love you. And then, like, I would, like, research them and all that, like, you know, build the community or build the set after talking to the community of people. But one of them, I did a doctor's conference in San Antonio. After after crushing the year before, I'd done a doctor's conference. Some doctor there was like, come do this, like, smaller private event for, like, just this hospital group. And I was working on this healthcare stuff. Like, oh, this is going to go great. Yeah. And I went up and I called, I basically called them prostitutes. And like, it, it was like, it was like, a, it was like a family event. Yeah. And they were not having it, bro. It, oh. was, it was bad. I haven't spoken to those people Luckily, since, but... you got booked at the sex workers conference oh, of the course. following week. Of course. Out of that. Yes. <laughs> no, that happened to me once. I got, I killed a corporate and they were like, you're, you're our guy now. We'll bring you back the next year. And I was like, great. And I remember doing it again the next year. And this year, I'm coming in cocky. I'm like, these people are cool. They know. That's always when you know you're going to eat shit. Yep. When you come in like, oh, like I'm yeah. not going to eat shit. Uh-huh. And I go up and uh, the mic goes out. And they're like, just keep just yeah. keep going. I'm like, no, you don't understand. This is the only thing I need. Yes, exactly. <laughs> the only thing I need is a mic. Yeah. And I just, I'm talking. They're just like, we don't. <laughs> ah. We don't know. We can hear. So, they just, so it's one of those bombs where like it happened slowly. Like I first couple of jokes kind of hit. I had the mic, and then the mic goes out, and then I'm just still talking. They're like, uh huh. Cut to like two minutes later. They're all just talking the of table. Course, and I'm of like, course. All right. 
Just count the minutes. Will you shut yeah. the fuck up? Yeah. <laughs> I've uh, definitely fucked a couple of gals at these corporations. Yeah, so. yeah that's the nice thing. Because, you know, they've all fucked each other. So you're the guy coming in with oh, the microphone, yeah. and you're the new guy. Pretty easy to get laid at these these Christmas parties, because then everybody gets hammered, too. Yeah, and also, if you do well, you're you're like a superhero. Like, mm-hmm. Who's this guy who just yeah. showed up and is funny? So exactly. what's it like? What, what made you want to do comedy? Yeah. I thought I want to do I'm pretty funny. You think I could do it? No, oh, there's a lot of that. No, Brett. A lot of the, yeah, 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 a lot of the bro-y guy yeah. like, hey, man, that was pretty good. Yeah. He gets you in a headlock. <laughs> Relax. <laughs> I did one for a pharmacy, pharmaceutical uh, conference. Uh-huh. Bombing, bombing, and I snapped. You know when you're like, fuck you guys, you're all drug dealers, you're, you're killing people, opioid addiction, and then they, they kicked me off. <laughs> and they gave you some Xanax on the yeah. way out. You gotta calm <laughs> down, calm man. Down, dude. You gotta chill. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that, those are, those are tough because you're like, it just sucks when you know people when you leave and they're like, that guy's bad. Exactly. I think that's the feeling that exactly. sucks. Because you're like, because those gigs, you are usually playing the hits. I think that's of what course. sucks. In your mind, you're like, these are bullets. I think that's what hurts. Is yes. Like, you know this is, you're throwing 95, you're throwing heat, and... Well, you're shooting baskets, but they're not counting them. Like, that yeah, went in. They're right. like, nah, that sucked. You're like, it went in. Yeah, it feels rigged. And I did the one where I went, that worked on The Tonight Show, which is the most cunty, uh, like, yeah. sassy, uh, condescending movie. By the way, it's like, that worked on a, a really hot crowd. Yeah. Why isn't it working at this pharmaceutical, <laughs> exactly. pharmaceutical it benefit? It worked on a comedy show. Yeah. No, it's, it's insane. But it's like that ego thing where you're like, I'm not, I don't want you to leave thinking I'm bad. Yeah, yeah. That's really what it is, but they will. They and will. The, the worst is you still got to eat. Like dinner that they haven't served. I know. Yeah. Oh, I always yeah. stick around, sit at your table. Yeah. You know, one of the best ones I ever did was was I, I don't know if I've told this on the podcast before, but I did a gig years ago for the New York Rangers, oh, like all shit. the legends, and it was hosted by Kenny Albert. Have I told this story? Yeah. Kenny Albert, you know Marv Albert's son. He's mm. a great guy, Kenny. He's a great broadcaster, but. He's hosting the show. It was like the weirdest gig. It was uh, at like Trump Golf Course in Connecticut or something. Oh, it was like wow. fun. I just got in a car. I didn't know I was going. Mm. And Coca Cola. It's like a corporate thing, but it's also the Rangers. So I remember I uh, I'm talking to Al Troutwig. Remember Al Troutwig? Yeah. He's dude. He's like an Anchorman character. Mm. He reeks of scotch. Uh-huh. I was like, oh man, Al Troutwig. I-, I loved you growing up. He goes, well, I haven't seen your work, so my opinion remains to be seen. I was like, Jesus. Wow. <laughs> guy's got an attitude yeah and by the way he did not become a fan that night I guarantee you. so i remember uh kenny is you know the mc he's kind of just he's not a comic he's just kind of leading the thing and all these rangers legends are there rod gilbert i'm talking to who passed away a couple years ago who's like the nicest guy ever like yeah. could not have been a cooler guy and then i bomb so hard that i remember i get off stage and adam graves you guys know adam graves yeah Rangers, great. Yeah, start comes over to me, and you can just see him searching his brain to find anything nice to say to me. Yeah, and this is what he comes up with. I love humor. Uh, <laughs> that's all he could give me. I love humor. I love humor. He, that's all you. you do. I like comedy. Yeah, and then I ended, and then I. Oh, you better believe I hit that crab leg steak. Oh, you got Filet go mignon bar, and I'm just chilling. And Kenny Albert sitting there with me goes, "I can't believe you just did that." Like he's like, "I can't believe you bombed that hard ah. and are still here." And I was like, "It's free food." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's a lot of balls. Oh yeah, yeah. but you got it. But eat. he was he was not he was la- he was like the one dude laughing in the corner. So I was like, you like feel as long as like one person is enjoying it you yes. feel like a psycho oh yeah, yeah. oh if For someone sure. comes over it's like man i've seen you before you, yes you're good you you're deserve good. better yeah, yeah. that's they, the best they were one. they were shitty yeah that goes a long way yeah. you ever have that at like a weekend when you're a young comic and someone from the staff comes up like you deserve better yeah, yeah. sorry just bombed all weekend you yeah. deserve better than this weekend <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's bittersweet because they're like being nice but they're also like you really tanked out there. You're bad. We got, yeah. we got less tips because of you. Right. right. <laughs> Asshole. I think worst gig I've ever done was Radio City warming up for the VMAs. This is a classic. I won't tell the whole story, but they put me on before the show. So you got to like warm up, but nobody cares. No. So you go out there and I'm like, Hello, hello. And they're all just like tweeting and looking at each other and like J Lo walked by. It was I was supposed to do fifteen minutes. I think I did eight and the guy was doing this with the headset. He's like, Get off, get off. <laughs> oh, it was so bad. Adam uh, no, Scott Rogowski was there. He texted me when this He happened. took a photo with me yeah. bombing. That's how bad I was bombing that he could take a picture, like a selfie. 
Oh, it's brutal. Scott's a mutual friend, and Scott texted me. He goes, why are they doing this to Norman? I, I was like, doing what? He goes, he's bombing at the VMAs. I was like, what? Yeah. I didn't know he was doing were it. Were you bombing because they were paying attention and uh, uh, the jokes were just not hitting, or you were bombing because everyone's just talking to each other and you couldn't get over them? They didn't even, I might as well not have been there. They thought I was like a... Like a grip. No, like, they, that's not a that's not a comedy crowd to begin with. Yeah, no. Mark's doing the. I remember Dane Cook did a set like at the peak of Dane Cook's fame on TV, and he bombed. Oh yeah, it's you're a not. Hell gig. Yeah, you're not doing well. No, no, Ariana Grande walked in, and the whole fucking place turned to look at her, and I was like, Hey, how about her? Uh, I fucked her. Like I was just trying to say anything, to get their attention, and they didn't like that. No, no, no they didn't know. hear it. They didn't even listen. They didn't even register. Oots was there. Oots was in the crowd for some reason. He was filming me and, and laughing. Like, look at this piece of shit. Ah. Well, for comics, it's hilarious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's hilarious because you know that that's the thing is like Leonard knows Mark's hilarious. So yeah. it's like one of the things where you're just like, this is awful. Oh, yeah, it's just laughing at oh, the yeah. decision. Like, yeah, sometimes you can say no, Mark. Yeah. <laughs> you don't yeah. have to do the VMA. But you, but you know what? You got a story. Yeah. I got a story. Then they pick you up on a limo. I brought the lady. You got to do it. Of course. It's the VMAs. You got to do it. I got personally thrown out of a venue by Chuck Berry. Whoa! What? Yeah. Did he pee on you? <laughs> so what I was happened? supposed to photograph him, and I was talking backstage, and he's Chuck like, "Chuck Berry." He's like, "You can't photograph me on stage, uh, backstage, but you, I'll invite you on stage. You can take your picture." Okay. Right. So I'm like, "He must have been 90." No, it was like 2008. He's still performing, like 2000. Chuck Berry. Chuck of Johnny Berry. Be Good. Yes. What? 2007? No, right. it was 2008. Is he anyway. still alive? No, he's no. dead now. Yeah. Uh, so he's like, I'm going to invite you on stage. You can take your picture then in the middle of the show. So like before that happens, I'm just like taking some pictures from, you know, off stage. And he points at me and I was like, oh, this is my moment. So I start walking up and he was like, get that guy out of here. <laughs> <laughs> and like the crowd, it was like a WWE work. The crowd was like, yeah. Oh, did they throw you out? They did. And you I went back to the chair. Ate my pasta primavera and I left. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So I, just, I don't follow what you did. Were you hired? Uh, I was shooting for a magazine. Ah. Uh -huh. I, I think the whole thing was a work just to get like the crowd. Oh, okay. into oh. It. Yeah. I, <laughs> and I don't think he wanted me to shoot before he asked that's, me to shoot. Got it. And I think that's what I really did. Can that's you pull this up? It. Can you pull up Richard Pryor live in concert? Because there's a guy in the beginning who keeps taking oh, yeah. photos of uh -huh. him, and Richard Pryor's like, get the fuck out of here. Yep. It's gold. I love that they left that in. It's, ain't no film in the camera. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yep. <laughs> get your, that set your opening, ugly ass That down. opening is so weird. Because oh, it's just people are just like seated. They're yeah, seated I know, but it kind of works. No, it's amazing. I mean, it's, that's probably his best special. Easily, easily. But the end of Sunset Strips is best bit. What's that one again? The, the uh, Jim Brown. Oh, yeah, it's yeah. It's so funny. That's a great one. No, this is Sunset Strip. You got to go to live in concert. Live in concert. It's crazy. He He's like known as the best comic of all time, and he has what, three hours? Well, you got his albums on Spotify are like... There's a billion of them. Oh, okay. You gotta, my favorite is probably the Africa bit. Oh, yeah. Uh, you got to go to... I don't think this is the right one. No. Yeah, that's not it. He's it's, wearing the red shirt. Yeah, yeah, that's it. I think it's the one at the top it's there. Live in concert. Oh, weird. All right, well. It's so funny that Netflix has it. I know. Netflix has Eddie Murphy, too. He, he drops the F-bomb like... I don't know, 38 times in the first six Not minutes? Not all comedy age is great. No. Although th those jokes they aged well. I don't yeah. Know. <laughs> actually, I rewatched it like a week ago. It's still funny. No, no, the special's amazing. Yeah. yeah. Eddie Murphy's insanely funny. The great. He's got it. Yeah. He's like a phenom. Which I don't like think... 22 in those years. I know. Like how? I don't think he should do stand up again. What do you guys think? Well, is he? I, there was that whole rumor that he was going to do it, and it was eighty million dollars, right? And then he just did he not accept it? I mean, what happened? Uh, he was going to do stand up. For, yeah, Netflix was going to pay him eighty million, right? Yeah, the problem is it would require him going out and working it out and bombing yeah. and and failing. And he's so famous that him showing up at like the comedy store would be a paparazzi thing. Like, oh yeah, is, can a guy like that actually work out material in private? Is the question. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you just yonder know. everything. Oh, yeah, that's, that's a good that's call. New shit. Good I guess call. so. I, mean, you've, I haven't seen, you didn't see Louis working his stuff out publicly, nothing leaked. But Eddie like Murphy, that. this is like over 30 years in the making. It, it's different than Louis. I think it's a bigger thing. But he'd still be dropping in at the clubs that we're doing. And just be like, hey, I'm going to do a weekend here, like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. True. Right? 
I wonder if he's worried. I mean, I'm I'm just playing devil's advocate here. I wonder if he's worried. Talking about Eddie Murphy? Yeah. About people just seeing him weak. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Because you have to be Cause, weak cause and vulnerable. May, maybe people, audience see this. Comics are going to obviously all want to watch. Right. Of course. But I think every comic would be like, that's just a process. And anyone that understands com- like, there's no way he's not going to be not funny. Sure. He's just going to not be the, what he wants to be. He's Immediately. Just, he's just going to be... Eat- like there's no way Eddie Murphy, Murphy can't just turn a switch on, yeah, and just do like the greatest twenty minutes you've ever seen in your whole life. Like he, right. he just does the old catalog, and better people lose their shit. Yeah, I think, I think it's probably a combination of fear and like he doesn't need to do it, and it's a lot yeah. of work. It's a lot of work. Yeah, it's Michael. It's Michael Jordan coming back now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, and be like, why? I, I'm past my prime. <laughs> yeah, I've done all this other shit. Leave me the fuck alone. But yeah. at least Jordan. That's the problem with comedy. Jordan go to the gym and just shoot threes for five hours alone uh-huh. in the gym. Whereas comedy, you need the audience to let you know what's what. Mm-hmm. Jo- Jordan on the Wizards was the clumps. <laughs> <laughs> that was Doctor Doolittle. <laughs> I got the prior clip. All right, let me just see the camera guy. This Who's part it? kills me. <laughs> 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 just riffing. Yeah. Look at the balls on this guy. This guy would be tased. By the way, by the way, people give a fuck. Yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> God, he's funny. He just talks funny. Place is going nuts. Look at this guy. Well, filming. He kind of looks like me. Yeah, it does. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, the camera's broken. He's still going. <laughs> what is this guy? Must be autistic or something. I think it's cocaine. Oh, and he, I mean, this guy's so oh, entitled. Oh, that's kind of nice. So he shook his hand. <laughs> Crazy I mean, that's motherfucker. That's insane. That's a pretty. I mean, imagine doing that and being kept in the special. Right. Because I think people will sometimes get excited when we just post a dumb. Because we all post uh, so, like crowd clips of and course. stuff. Sometimes people be excited. They're like, "That's me in the thing." You're in, in a Richard Pryor special? The special. Yeah. Being in an asshole. Beginning. Yeah. Not yeah, not, but, not like in a good way. You're just like a dickhead. But it yeah. created a funny moment. I'm not defending the guy, but it did create a, a classic did. moment. Have you felt like you were there. At my, my first special taping, someone at the... Nice. At thanks, the, for, thanks for putting it right in my mouth. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> thanks for aiming it right here. The, he could, the he could have lifted really up his well legs and spread to the room, but he literally <laughs> just fed it to me. Well, I had to get it a little up on the mic, and I didn't want to hit no, him with that. it. No, no, I appreciate the uh, anything consideration. You know, my first, the first special. Yeah. Uh, there's a girl in the the crowd. Twenty. When I, when I say girl, I mean twenty eight year old woman. Okay. Sitting up front, and at the end of the special, like I'm still taping, like I'm about to do my closing bit, she throws a note on the stage, mm. and she's like, she asked me if I could. Uh, be in her book mm. i'm like this is and a pink piece of pa- pink ink writes can you be in my book i'm like this is where you shot your shot of, wow to, like, hey like that that i didn't i didn't put it in i didn't keep her in it's like i'm not giving this lady any fucking shine good you know like get like richard Pryor commend him for being like this guy right and maybe it was a decision of like this was fun i, I bet if it was funny i would have kept it in but sure. it wasn't. i was just like so annoyed I was like, yeah funny fuck? trumps all yeah like, the, how dare you the entitlement of like this will be my moment to, yeah i'll interrupt this guy doing his thing doing that it show is annoying but to do it at a taping there's cameras That's crazy there's, there's crazy there's five eighty thousand dollar cameras around you you know what yeah. i mean like what the fuck are you doing but the annoying thing is when you have that great moment and the cameras aren't rolling mm-hmm. like i had I, that uh, i had that in there was a mishap in a, at wise guys comedy club which is one of my favorite clubs in utah, utah. a mishap where on valentine's day a woman rushed the stage and handed me roses mm. and i just shit on her and it was like this is a great weird moment yeah and it was like fun. We were like having fun with it, but the cameras were off, and I was like, "Ah, oh, that was a great one." <laughs> Damn, because you know? it's just such a wacky moment. Yeah, yes. I had a similar thing in Phoenix. I do a joke about gay guys. I was like, "Any gay guys here?" And a guy goes, "I think so," <laughs> and it crushed. And then I made fun of him for like five minutes, and they were like, "Oh, we forgot to turn the cameras on." Brutal. Brutal. God damn it. Yeah. You had one Stand job. up live. Tempe Improv. Got it. Got it. Got it. Yeah, but. That that pink letter shit or the pink uh, the the what do you mean put you in her book? Put, just put me in the book. Just put, it's not a movie. It's or, a book. So write writing, me in. Writing a book about Patels. <laughs> okay, lady. Just, Jesus, you could have just DM'd me like a normal person. Exactly. 
if someone shot me an email, I'd respond to like most DMs. Yeah, I'd love to be in the book. Yeah, sure. But not anymore. Not anymore. Uh, Do you have uh, any pet peeves, Namesh? Anything that just bother you about humans? I got one of you don't. I, yeah, me too. I got no, many. I, I mean, I, if I thought about it, yeah, probably. But Take a think. Take yeah, a sure, think. We, what about we, something your wife does, drives you crazy, uh, maybe... I got one. Asians. <laughs> <laughs> I got one for you. All go right, ahead, go ahead. Um, when people say, the, I don't know if Mark, maybe, this is like something Mark would say, so I don't know if you actually said this, Uh-oh. but there's a peeve of mine. Well, we have similar peeves, I feel like. Okay. But when people ask you to do something and they go, is there any world where you would do this? <laughs> any world? Oh, what do you mean in any one. world? Hate yeah, that. Yeah, under the sea. <laughs> under right. the sea in that world. What do you mean? In, <laughs> right. Is there any world where you could see doing this? Just no, I don't want to do it. Yeah. It's always something that you they know you don't want to do. In any world, that's good. In Is the there any verse. world where you could uh, pick me up from the airport on Friday? I'm like, yeah, not this world, but <laughs> in, I'm sure there's a world. I'm sure there's an, another in, universe. In West world, maybe. <laughs> I'm sure there's a Rick and Morty extended world. Yeah, you, you go in a portal. Yeah, I'd pick you up, but I can't, I can drive in that world. I can't drive in this one. <laughs> you, you, you can't drive. I not really. Oh. In born and bred in New York, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, legally. <laughs> yeah, he ran over a kid in '88. Was oh, it? what is a whole new world? In a whole new world, could you get me on your flying carpet? What, what, what peeves you guys have? Well, I got a. I uh, went to L.A. last week and got a Tesla as a rental car. Nice. Yeah. The, uh, First of all, line two hour line at, at budget rental car, and I was like, "What's this line?" And I noticed there was a lot of white dreadlocks around. Coachella. Got it. I didn't know that. So everybody's getting their rental car to drive out to the desert. Mm -hmm. But I finally got up to the counter, and she goes, for $15 more, you want to get a Tesla? I said, I've never driven one. I'm in. Did they have to give you the pep talk how to drive it? I said, I'll figure it out. Really? It took me a good 20 minutes in the driveway or the parking lot, but I got I think it. They, they usually give you the rundown. Yeah, she I tried hear. to. I was like, I got it. I got it. Even though I didn't. <laughs> I'm reading the manual. I'm, I'm not going to give no woman explaining to drive this yeah. man's car. <laughs> <laughs> and I just want to be on my way. I don't want to have to like wait for a guy right. and go, yeah, oh, yeah. he's going to go, this is the on switch and this is the charge. You know, I'll figure it out. When you get an Uber and they pick you up in a Tesla, it is a little exciting. It's yeah. fun. There's there's like a moment where you're like, this is kind of cool. Yeah. But point being, super fun to drive. It's it's so fast. There's no gears, so it just, just accelerates. Mm-hmm. Super fun. But she goes, hey, just want to let you know, if you don't return it 70% charged... We're going to fuck you in the ass. And I said, <laughs> that was a, joke. I can a do guy that. comes out with a fucking big dildo. <laughs> yeah. He's like, we'll fucking do it. We're going to yeah, fuck you. Exactly. <laughs> Says Elon Musk on the side. <laughs> yeah. Another guy's crawling out in all fours. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it was a boring company. It bored right into my taint. But I go, I got it. No problem. I'll find a charger. Yeah. These chargers are hidden all over the town. I can't find any of them. I couldn't figure out any way to, yeah. way to charge it. So I had to turn it in with like 12% battery. Well, that's, that's, see, that's one of the things they tell you when you pick up the Tesla is that you could just look for charging stations on that big map. They just point the Tesla. Oh, charging I, try, I tried all that. They're all like in neighborhoods. One was in a, a parking structure. So I was like, all right, I guess I'll go into a parking structure. I had to get a ticket. The arm goes up. Uh-huh. So now you're paying for parking while you charge your car. Listen to this shit. This is when the technology fucks you. So I finally find a charger, and you have to sign up for the app. So I, all right, let me sign up oh for the app. God. Clock's ticking. The flight's going to yeah. take off. So I'm trying to charge this fucking thing at 8 in the morning. No service in a structure. So I have to run out of the structure, get the app, go back in. I mean, and I just said, fuck it. I'd rather get this, this plowed happened in the to me. Ass. A similar thing happened to me. I had to get, I had to get a letter notarized recently. Oh. No one fucking notarizes. Oh, I tried two banks. Such crazy I tried a lives. UPS. <laughs> notarize? That's Where the hard. fuck are all these notaries hanging around? So I had to download an app, and then I, I paid for the app. The app, everything's a, a notary. That, everything's an app now. Yeah. Everything's an app. That's, That's a, the next John Wick movie. They're like, you got to get a letter notarized. <laughs> yeah. He's like, ah. <laughs> That's a tremendous pet peeve of mine. It's not people. It's just everything's being appified, and I fucking hate it. Agreed. Yeah. Not. I don't need an app to eat your pizza. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> Just give me the fucking pizza. There are pizza apps. Yeah, now. I'm here. You know when you park on the street and they're like, "Oh, to get the parking slip, you got to get the app of the parking meter," and you're like, "God damn it! Just what? let me put coins in this what? bitch." Yeah, why are you trying to steal my data to fuck some parking here? Just I know. 
And then got, now you got a new fucking button on your phone that you'll never use. Oh, and you're going through your apps. You're like, why does my phone have no storage? Oh, yeah, because I had to download Crackle for some reason. <laughs> what the hell am I have to do Crackle? I what? know. One I got, episode. I got one for you. Another peeve. OCD people it just bug me. I'm sorry. I, mm. I know it's a disorder. It it's just feels like the most narcissistic disorder. They use it. People who are like, if I don't wash my hands 47 times Thank and you. twirl three, this plane's going down. <laughs> I'm like, what kind of, who do you think you are, God? Yeah, <laughs> You think point. your hands aren't washed? It's going to punish everyone, 400 other people on good your point. fucking flight? Why did the United flight go down? Because uh, Jimmy didn't Purell. <laughs> what do you mean? It's very self-involved. It's me, fucking me, insane. Me. No, I'm with you. I, my pet peeve is when people are, Thank one of my Lisa. pet peeves is if people are at like a, like the Delta Lounge buffet. And they like don't know how to sneeze properly. Oh, I'm like, ooh, like it, I don't know. I think a lot of people learn to sneeze like this. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to sneeze into your elbow. Yeah. And for whatever reason, like I'm just like, All right, I gotta get off this fucking line. Here goes this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go outside and eat yeah. at the bar because I can't eat any of this shit anymore. You know, you gotta have like the soup or something that's closed off. Yeah, it's nonsense. By the way, it's always shit you would never eat in that thing. But when you're in line, I'm like, I'm like, y'all get a loaded baked potato soup. <laughs> <laughs> you would so never, true. you would never order that anywhere but at Delta That's you're like so yeah true. this doesn't count no. you know what it's like it's like a movie on a plane you're like I would never watch uh, yeah. Traveling Pants or whatever the fuck the sisterhood <laughs> but on a plane I'm like I'll watch it oh, uh, here, can I shit on United for a second please, please. I just like, took them here yesterday what the f like they have eight movies on their plane I know Eight movies. And, eight movies and they're old and they don't even start you can't like select them to start you gotta like wait you select them uh, and then you gotta wait five minutes for it to sync up you can't like you can't leave it and come back otherwise it's fucking it's never a movie you want to watch either it's always a, like homeward bound a yeah. man called otto <laughs> like, <hell? what? laughs> a man called otto <laughs> like, come that on, looks like tom a stinger hanks. oh yeah <laughs> what a, what, tom hanks has not been in a watchable movie in a really long time he started I making like. some poor decisions i love yeah. tom hanks but like what, what's going on he blew, uh, he blew through some money doing something which one Bridge of Spies? that was boring as hell he sucked in elvis he had the bad accent yeah he did suck in elvis he's been in some I'm stinking. A Man Called Otto was quite possibly one of the worst movies. You watched it? I've never heard I of it. I thought that was a punchline. It, no, man. It was on it was on the United plane. Damn. Man. I oh. thought that was used for emphasis. No, man. It was it was it that shit hurt my feelings sitting there watching that. Like, why the fuck did I commit two hours oh, to this thank bullshit? You. Yeah. Now well, what's going on with me and Bluetooth? Why can't I get any Bluetooth working? I don't know. Why? I, I try to sync up to the Tesla. It's really annoying. Well, and, and and if you can't get Bluetooth going, you're just fucked. Yeah. We're so reliant on this technology now that it doesn't work. You're just sitting there listening to your fucking thoughts. It's hell. It's hell. <laughs> so now I'm playing a podcast on my phone like this while driving because I couldn't get it to get into the system. You ever hung over on a flight and the Wi-Fi doesn't work and you can't talk to someone in the outside world and you're like, I'm going to fucking kill myself. Oh, oh really? Yeah. I'm alone yeah. in my fucking mind? Yeah. Oh. I, I disconnect. That's you my, like I, it. I love... I love a plane, five hour like cross country flight. Not when I'm hungover though. Oh, okay. That's you don't yeah. get that hangover anxiety? No, well, I don't drink that heavily on the road because I know if I did, I'd turn into you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Clip it. <laughs> <laughs> but like, it's just that that five like the cross country flight, five hours not talking to anybody, just me myself, the notebook maybe. You know, oh, Delta's robust selection of fine films. Sure. Delta has a good selection. Delta's got And you know point. what's good about Delta? I mean, we're really sucking off Delta here, but they've got the classics. They've got documentaries. Yeah. Action adventures. You're like, I can watch His Girl Friday. What is this? Oh, wow. What is this? Fucking they AMC got, Presents? They got 30 for 30. Yes. You. Yeah. So they got, like, you don't know Bo? That's, wow. next, that's next up on my I heard Delta's got uh, a man named Otto on it too <laughs> <laughs> what's that one by the way all Mark's peeves could have been solved if he listened to that lady at budget <laughs> what do you mean the bluetooth didn't work I don't know where to plug the car in well here's the real oh I'm sorry who, who are you Mark's wife you <laughs> never listen <laughs> here's the real cum stain about the, the bluetooth <laughs> I got in the car it started working immediately and I was like I didn't even have to sync it up and then I got in the car again after going to the store and it didn't work yeah, the, it not working is annoying because you realize like all this shit was so simple when we just had a plug. Mm. Like that aux cord was just easy. Or, yeah. you, or you have the, when sometimes you're, you're trying to get your phone cooking, I'm like, this is when you get hit by the car, by the way. Yes. It's when you're, you're like, why won't it connect? That's your, that's your fucking ending right so there. So true. That's when you get hit. Well, you know what they say, the more smart, the smarter technology gets, the dumber people get. Yeah. Yes. You know? True. Yeah, like think about how many phone numbers you used to know. 
How many addresses you used to know? Now it's all in there. Phones are getting better. We're getting worse. You got that right. Phones are getting thinner. We're not. We're not. No. <laughs> I'll tell you. No respect. Yeah. <laughs> this is Mel Brooks. The 3,000-year-old three, three man. This old juice. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. These are, these are hidden nice, these drinks. I like them. Are you drinking as well? No, I'm cheating over here drinking club soda and, cl- Damn. and lime and cucumber. It's delicious. You'll be I'm driving. actually a driver, so as soon as I leave here, drive it. Oh, I didn't oh, know really? that. Okay. Yeah. Hope your Bluetooth works. <laughs> yeah, nice cruise what are we talking? Town car, Uber, a limo? Fiat, very little, right oh, outside. Oh, yeah, I love a Fiat. <laughs> Italian. Yeah, those are what tiny. What do those look like? I don't know what they look like. Is that like Italian job type, Mini Cooper type car? Or mm-hmm. what? Similar. A little different. That was kind of Best a fun Best vehicle movie, in New York yeah. City. Parking it is. the greatest. You can park anywhere. It's like a micro penis. How, <laughs> I don't know if you can't park. Parking works if you have a small yeah. dick. Yeah, you, you can, can fit park anywhere. anywhere. Like, Excuse me, ex- you have to move. I can park here. Yeah. No, no spot wants to have you if you got a micro dick. That one right there. Red? Um, it's actually white. Well, that's a Mini Cooper. Uh, yeah, that one right there. There you go. That was a that was a fun last. That's scene a Mini Cooper. Cool. Just driving those tiny cars. Oh yeah, great movie. Remake. Right. Yeah, I never saw the original. When's the last Not time good. you drove somewhere? It's been a, during the New pandemic. York has some great drives. Well, I'm a terrible yeah. driver, dude. So I, uh, my ex was like, I want to see how bad a driver you actually are. Uh-huh. So she's pulled over in like a in like a parking lot, and she was like, "This is pretty bad." Wow. And, and there's no one around. I was like, man. I was like, it's not that bad. She was like, it's fucking bad. Patreon. Like, we're, we're, yeah. Mark teaches Sam to drive. I would love to teach you to drive. Really? I can teach you to drive stick tomorrow. Really? Yeah, not on my car, though. I don't want you to ride What are you driving? I got a 1973 BMW oh, 02. That's right. Should we actually do a Patreon of this? That would be pretty yeah, fun. Yeah, we can go to or get a rental car from uh, Turo. There you go, you Turo. Ever, you ever use Turo? Yeah, they got nice stuff. They got some good, good shit. Good tuna. <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> What's that mean? A Toro? I yeah, don't Toro, know. Toro. Oh. I was making it. Was, it was like a Norman type joke. Yeah. And you didn't get know. it. It was is, for you. Is that a type of tuna? Yes. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Sorry. But this is pretty amazing. This is in Germany. This woman was this parking her gold. car. And uh, she asked her friend, What does this mean? Like Frauen parking plots? And she told her what it means. <laughs> Uh oh, that's not what I wanted. Ah, uh, Google see bitch. This. You were really, you're on a cold streak today, man. <laughs> Come on. You couldn't find the Nutella thing I wanted earlier. Yeah. You're pulling up nonsense. What the fuck is going on? Well, can I explain this other than. This is pretty sure. funny. Yeah. So uh, she pulls into the parking spot and she asks her friend, What does this sign mean? And it turns out the sign means women's parking. And she said, Well, why is it women's parking? Don't look at the screen. She said, Why is it women's parking? And she said, Oh, because we make the spaces bigger. In so Germany. So bad driving? Yeah. yeah. And what I like about it is it's like, this is super utilitarian. We're not making a judgment about, we are making a judgment. Women drivers are just like, they keep hitting cars, so we made the spaces wider. It's yeah. Like, yeah. That's They're funny. very practical as Germans. They're what, practical. What do they got for the Asian people? Wow. They don't let them drive. He said it. <laughs> I would never say I'm Asian. Like that. That's true. <laughs> exactly. That's, true. That's what I'm saying. You can say it. Yeah, you know, you know, no one ever talks about an Asian fish. Well, all of you bailed on me on that sofa. <laughs> I liked it. I liked it. Wow. Welcome to my world. Getting canceled. <laughs> he, blew, he blew a whistle. This is my Shane Gillis moment. <laughs> I think. I think. Too late. I think Asian drivers are terrific. Yeah, we are. Hey. We're good people. I remember driving once, and it was so bad that you ever have that where you have to just like some guys like fuck you, you fucking suck, and I have to just roll down the window and be like, I know, <laughs> <laughs> I'm fucking bad. I'm sorry. <laughs> you ever see the Tim Robinson thing? Pull up the Tim Robinson driving thing. Just go to like the meat of it. Like uh, it, this is fucking. This is one of my favorites. Tim is the funniest person on the planet. He's my favorite. I love this show. Yeah, pull this up. Is he a bad driver here? Just go to like 30 seconds and when it starts. What is your problem, man? Do you know how to fucking drive? No. <laughs> what? No, I don't know how to fucking drive. <laughs> I don't know what any of this shit is in a fucking Sam. Scam. <laughs> what are you talking about, you psycho? You know how to drive? Not everybody knows how to do everything. Driving isn't the only thing. Just move your car. Okay. I don't know how. <laughs> Hey, oh my God, just grab the steering wheel. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody please face swap Sam into this and send it yeah. to us immediately. <laughs> Photoshop. It yeah, it does. It does hurt, actually. <laughs> what if you get to where you're going and it's a job interview and I turn out to be the boss? I'm not going to a job interview. You could okay. be. Yeah. <laughs>
folks, We Might Be Drunk is brought to you by Sheath Underwear, the official underwear of comedy. What do you got? Uh-oh, he's got it. Usually you're only wearing women's panties. I just assume I'm wearing it. That's what Sheath wears. They make women's panties. That's true. Days, dude. That's so true. I could I could get my little panty line support from a fucking war hero. Yeah. If you're tired of having your dick stuck to your balls and your balls stuck to your leg and your leg stuck to your dick, it's time to try Sheath. It has two pounds. Ladies have dicks now, too. That's true. Good point. You're right. We don't discriminate. Two pouches, one for the dong, one for the balls. Sheath underwear comes in tons of cool patterns to help you look and feel comfortable. You know we love it. We're wearing them right now. It really is the best underwear. It's the best. I have I have a friend who, whenever he's over, he's like, do you have extra? And sometimes I do, and I give it to him. And he's like, that's a, that's a good... Because he's like, I want it, but it's expensive. And I was like, right. it's not that... It's For what you're getting, it lasts, man. Oh, yeah. I gave outside Steve, like, ten pairs. Really? Yeah, because I had so many, and... He's taller than me, so I was like, these gonna fit. Go nuts. So uh, they didn't leave out the ladies either. Sheath has boys' shorts, sports bras, and bikini briefs. Go to sheathunderwear.com. Use promo code DRUNK to get 20% off your first order. Every order comes with Sheath's 100% money-back guarantee. That's sheathunderwear.com. Promo code DRUNK. Get Sheath Underwear and let them support your balls. Hey, folks. We Might Be Drunk is brought to you by Fume. Cold turkey is delicious, but cold turkey is a terrible way to break your bad habits. Fume is the fun, all-natural way that can help you kick that habit. Fume uses all-natural, delicious-flavored air for you to breathe, so you can replace that hand-to-mouth feel. No electronics, no vapor, no harmful chemicals. That makes sense, because it's really all about that oral fixé. You know, you just got to go back and forth, back and forth, something to do. Often we walk into a social situation, I tend to grab a beer or grab my tits. But yeah, you gotta uh, you gotta do something, and fume is a way to do it without killing yourself. Those vapes, I don't trust them. I'm not. I'm a vape apologist. So I think it looks good. It feels good. I took a few whiffs myself, and it God, it tastes great. And the new version is fun to play with, fun to hold, and you pull it out. It's a conversation starter. It's a good time. Your fume comes with an adjustable airflow dial and is designed with movable parts and magnets for fidgeting. Give your fingers a lot to do and help you de-stress while breaking your habit. Put a clit on there. Let me play with that. Stopping is something we all put off because it's hard, but switching to fume is easy, enjoyable, and even fun. Fume has served over 100,000 customers and has thousands of success stories, and there's no reason that can't be you. Join Fume to help break up your destructive habits by picking up the Journey Pack today. Head to tryfume.com and use code DRUNK to save 10% off when you get the Journey Pack today. That's T-R-Y-F-U-M dot com and use code DRUNK to save an additional 10% off your order today. Get some Fume. Uh. It's finally spring and the weather is warming up. Don't spend all your free time chopping vegetables. Enjoy the great outdoors and let Factor do the cooking for you. Factor is America's number one ready to eat meal kit. Delivers nutritious meals straight to your door, leaving you more time to get outside and soak up the sun. Factor's always fresh, never frozen meals take just two minutes to prepare, so you'll be eating well no matter how hectic your schedule becomes. With over 34 chef, prepared, dietitian, approved options each week, there's always something new and exciting to try. Factor meals come in a variety of lifestyle options, so if you're vegan, vegetarian, keto, or calorie counting, there's something delicious waiting for you. Head to factormeals.com slash drunk50 and use the code drunk50 to get 50% off your first box. That's code drunk50 at factormeals.com slash drunk50 to get 50% off your first box. Best. Yeah, you got to learn to drive. My my lady can't drive. And it sucks if we'll go on road trips and I'm like, just... Give me like an hour. You drive for an hour, and she'll drive for like ten seconds. And I'm like, I got it. She's drive. that bad. It's she, bad. Is she Why from is she New York so too? bad? She's Boston. I guess I don't really drive. She's people. from like the city in Boston. Nah, she's from the burbs, but I think she just doesn't care enough. She's like not dedicated enough to not. She'd rather look at her phone than wreck. You know. In Fair Germany, enough. she fit right in. 
Huh? In Germany. That's right. right. That's right. But she hits the curb immediately, or like the guy next to her is like, rah, rah, you're coming into my lane. And I'm just like, pull it over. I got to drive. You taking that Beamer anywhere fancy? I take it to gigs that are like an hour and a half away. Uh-huh. No, no further. I'm too scared of getting uh, stranded. Oh, it breaks down all the time? It never has, but I'm, I know it's coming. You got know, it. it's uh, those gigs early on when I'd be opening for people and they'd be like, you can drive, right? And I'd be like, yeah. And then we'd, I'd be driving. I remember I was with, opening for a guy and he was like, pull over dude yeah <laughs> he's like this is bad he like brought me so he could like work on his laptop while i drove right. and then he was pretty fucking pissed <laughs> and it I, was tracy morgan and they <laughs> i drove che had a gig in like like a college gig very che, che can't drive right che can't drive i would think yeah most city kids can't drive uh uh what's it called i think it was probably we were like four years he had just gotten snl or something he was doing snl so he had like a big college gig or something and he we were driving, I was driving, and it was one of these moments where I was like, I should not be driving because we were in a, a car that should not be in the snow. Oh. And I could tell Chad never driven before because I'm white knuckling this thing. Mm-hmm. We're, it's snowing, we're going upstate New York, we're behind like a salt truck, and it's like spraying salt at us, and Chad's just playing on his phone. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, super cash meanwhile there's a cliff on one side and like a bunch of houses on the other like we're about to die bro you understand like i'm going 20 miles an hour you're going down like (gasps) and he's on snood or something (laughs) like snood what the fuck fuck? sudoku (laughs) i want to take i want to get a car in the city like i may it'll be this year or next year that i'll why isn't just a huge waste of money here i think there's a i think you get a lot of you can expand the things you do that aren't comedy i agree like i want to I want to go hiking and shit. I want to like just take yeah. like mind clear. Get on the train. <laughs> What's well, that? That Hudson Valley drive though is beautiful. Yeah, huh? that's beautiful. But yeah. so is the train up the Hudson. That's Valley. true. Have you ever taken that's the train true. up there? You're Very right. nice. A- a- and, along and the also, river. You take a tr- uh, train up there and you rent a car or you Uber or something. Yeah, Uber. but you know he's got a couple bucks now. Yeah, you live I mean, in what Brooklyn? Yes, sir. Oh, you got a little space out there. We're working, you know. Just yeah. take a, taking a little cruise up. No, like, I get it. Late car, night drive is nice. I just think in New York. You do you have a car? No. Never had a car. I don't know. I, I didn't. Never had a car. Never had a car. Well, he's from He's Brooklyn. from New York, too. I got my oh. license when I was 28. Oh, shit. Yeah. Damn. But you can you kind of drive. I've drive. been in a car with you I'm before. a good driver. Yeah, yeah, He's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. I had a gig in Poughkeepsie two weekends ago, and not bragging, but uh, that drive up it's made, made the trip. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful yeah. town. Well, that we, it's so weird that, I mean, it depends where you go, obviously, but that, that train ride going to, like, Albany, it's beautiful. Oh, yeah. yeah. Until you get to Albany. Yeah. yeah. And then That's you're like, what the fuck? <laughs> what yeah. happened? Oh, my God. This is oh, the capital. The beauty, oh. <laughs> the beauty ends at the sign that says, welcome to Albany. Yeah. <laughs> and then Cuomo grabs you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that really is a dump, Albany. Yeah. Buffalo as well. Oh, I like Buffalo, Rochester, I, I, no, Syracuse. I, no, Buffalo's pretty, Buffalo's got hard, I think. Buffalo's the best I, one. I, I like Buffalo. When did you go to Buffalo last? Less than a year. I went to Buffalo in October. Great food. Great people. You have. A, have you a, been to chefs? The Italian food in Buffalo is excellent, and the wings are incredible. I I, I got a weird love for what Buffalo wings. Of course, there. Yeah. there you go. I I got love for bu- Buffalo. Syracuse is a shithole, obviously. But, oh, uh, pu. I did yeah. Albany and Syracuse and Hartford in a three day one nighter run. Oh, that's the Bermuda Triangle yeah, of hell. It was, Sad. It was brutal. Yeah, it, Hartford. How do you, that doesn't even make sense in did, terms of routing? It, I did. I think it was Hartford. First. And then, uh, what's come? I think, I'm pretty sure it was Albany. <laughs> this should be you just walking into Hartford getting stabbed doing the gig. <laughs> yeah. You go into Buffalo, you get stabbed. <laughs> we, we, one. we were driving up, and there was a three, four hour pile up on the highway. So it took, like, we went straight from Hartford, dropped all our shit off at the hotel, and then had to jet to the, uh, I think, Har- Albany Funny Bone or Syracuse Funny Bone, one of those two clubs. Yeah. I was like, mm. This place is ass. That Syracuse ass. Funny Bone, that mall is really like, if you don't get shot there, consider it a W. <laughs> really, <laughs> really a fucking dump. I'll, I'll be there this summer, the, guys. The coach's, <laughs> the coach's wife got fucking mugged there. Really? Wow. Yeah. The coach's wife, that's all there is in that town is I basketball. Know. The orange. It's a player they got cut from the team. Yeah. <laughs> nice one. So I've shot uh, it that way. <laughs> look up, chef, pull up Chef's Restaurant in yeah. um, Buffalo, dude. It's like, a pasta parm it's like a brick of cheese i mean look you're gonna want to commit suicide after eating it uh-huh. but it's the best fucking thing you've ever put in your mouth it's unreal um just a brick of cheese and pasta um 
All no, right. It's oh awesome. my god. god. Oh, the marinara is phenomenal. Look at that. Look at that. Tell Dang. me that you wouldn't have that's but, cheese, dude. It's so good. That looks wow. ridiculous. And that, and that. I mean, we made the mistake. I was with, of course, uh, Kid Garissimo, Gary Veter. Oh yeah. And he was Kid like, Garissimo. "Let's fucking." He's like, "Let's go to this place before the show." Oh. I want to die. Yeah, of course. That was also the infamous Oyster Weekend, where Gary thought it was a good idea to get takeout oysters. <laughs> In Buffalo, Buffalo. Uh, <laughs> and, then, and then he took one, and he's like, "It's fine, shut up." And he takes, he slurps one. I'm like, "Yeah, fuck it, what the hell? We'll go down together." So I slurp one. I listen to him on stage. I can hear him on stage going, Bleh. Bleh. and I'm like, "Oh, Oyster fuck, it's, burps. it's gonna hit me in a second. So I go on stage. I'm like, Bleh. Oh, Bleh. No. "All because of his dumb you guys optimism." So, you guys are so brave to be. I don't eat. Brave? Shit. We're fucking idiots. Before each, I mean, those are two synonymous things. A lot of times, <laughs> bravery and stupidity are like two brothers you know <laughs> but i i rarely eat before getting on stage i can't no I, it's a nice thing it's like a nice reward usually for after the set yeah. sure. but if you're doing two shows you usually plans out that you do in between right uh -huh. yeah but nothing's open when i get off stage exactly. so I, I always eat before oh I no i do in between if i'm doing two but if i do mm. one yeah i mean i like it's nice to have something to look forward to yeah yeah i sure. do the diva shit of how the club bring me something while i'm on stage like in the green room. Wow. Yeah, oh, that's nice. No, that's a good move. Do one of those, you know? So speaking of the road, are you guys working on any new bits? Oh, shit. I got a couple. Sally's I got a couple ideas. Out the bits. Yeah, what do, you, what do you guys got? New bits. I'm talking right now on stage, I'm talking about going to therapy. And it's like, is, uh, is therapy new for you? Yes, it's very new. Welcome. What, what What prompted the therapy decision? I'm trying to stop touching kids. We'll see <laughs> if it works. <laughs> yeah. It's not easy to quit. <laughs> yeah. I got the patch. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's just uh, chewing the gum. It was. It was what we were talking about earlier about like coming home that night when I was super drunk. My wife was like, "You got like I have definitely like latent anger issues from when I grew up as a kid. How I grew up as a kid, and like." Finally, this year, I was like, I should probably see somebody. You about should it. stop hitting her and yes. talk about it. Someone. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> is this from the parents, the, the anger stuff, or is this like parents, family? Yeah, for sure. Okay. So is like, anyone else in your family in therapy? Yes. Oh uh, wow. Multiple people in my family are in therapy, as they should be. I think everyone, Indian people, don't go. Right. Yeah, I'm just trying. I don't to think get it's. Sponsored. I don't think it's a necessity therapy, but I do think a lot of the people that are like therapy is a joke really need therapy. They definitely yeah, need to talk yeah. to somebody. They really do. Yeah. What, how long have you been going? I haven't been in a while, but I, I went for a long time. Right. Very long time. Have you gone? I've been going for years now. Yeah. I pushed yeah. Mark into it. He got me in. And what do you think? I love it. Game changer. Although Alan, our therapist, pulled a weird one the other night. Tell me if you've had this. I leave there. We had a good sesh. Twenty minutes later, I get a text. He goes. I, I, I thought of something else. Can we do another session? And I'm like, well, wait a minute. Is this a grift? <laughs> he, he, he owes a bookie, dude. That's yeah. What... <laughs> it's like, hey, I got. I need, I need you to come back. And, it's, you know, it's like an upsell. Right. Uh, no, yeah. I haven't had. I mean, my therapist, my therapist only worked for me with I me. Mean, I've only worked with my therapist for like th six sessions now. Okay. And it does. It, I'm always like, it's so expensive. Sure. Yeah, it's, it's insane. It's so much free to just lie to yourself. Well, that's like, the it's thing. So it's so like, it's very... It's like, <laughs> that's I'm true. Fine, you know? That's true. Just not talk to anybody, but... It is incredibly expensive. But that's this is the true. good part. It's almost like a relationship where the beginning is the most fun. So and you have a you have a male therapist. But I haven't gone in a while, but he well, yeah, he was a man. Did you did you purposely make that decision, or were you like? No, I think like if it was a woman, I would have been open to that. But then there's definitely that Dr. Melfi sexual chemistry. Sure, you, know? you got that right. Yeah, <laughs> you want to fuck Alan? Yeah, <laughs> want to? That's, no, he doesn't take your opinion into account. No. He Good just forces couch. himself on you. Yeah, but <laughs> he use those tissues. So yeah, that's, that's, that's the shit I'm working on right now. Like, no, this, we. Uh, is yours a woman? Yeah, mine's a woman, but it was... Is she hot? I don't find her attractive, no. Perfect. Yeah, yeah that's good. White She's lady? Cool. Yes. Oh, okay. But I, I, the first therapist I went to was probably 20, right before pandemic happened. 20? 2020. Oh, I, I thought you were saying there's therapist was 20. No, 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 no. no. Good vision. A, a Doogie Howser <laughs> therapist. He's like, dude, you just need a TikTok more. That's your problem. <laughs> <laughs> Have you tried athletic greens? It was, it was, a, it was, a, it was an Indian woman, and... Uh, because I was told, like, go, if you're going to go to a therapist as an Indian person, you should probably talk to someone Indian who understands, like, the cultural context of that the makes sense. you're going to be talking about. And I started talking to her, and it just, the vibe was off from the sense of, like, she was just, like, on her phone and, like, listening. What? And I was, like, on like, her phone? Like, it felt like she was just, like, being dismissive. Huh. And I was, like, okay, well, but it was even in that session that I had, like, a breakthrough. I was, like, okay, this lady's not it. Yeah. 
if I wanted to talk to someone who's going to ignore me the whole time, I would just been on a date with an Indian chick as opposed to me. Yeah. <laughs> but but with but the next person I like I started Googling recently to find somebody and then the most qualified people are women in terms of like like some PhD in trauma psychology mm. or like a medical you trauma? Degree. What's that? Do you think you have a lot of trauma? For sure. So my cousin my cousin is an alcoholic and we grew up together. And so I'm like well we grew up together and he basically saw the same shit that he saw that made him who he is mm. you know, ha- make him, made him have what he has so i was like i probably got some shit in my brain that i didn't ha- has manifested as comedy as opposed to boozing all the time but i should probably talk to somebody at this at the same level yeah and if a trauma psychologist can handle like a, a war vet she can Right. Handle this fucking dumbass, you know? Like, <laughs> I've only killed, like, one person. So, it's like, what are you gonna do? <laughs> do you, is there, uh, are you still close with your cousin? Is he alcoholic? Yeah, yeah. We talk all the time. And your cousin is, like, it's a serious problem? Well, he's he's sober now. Uh, but, yeah, it was it was a serious problem. And he's, like, on the mend and talking to therapists. And Come on, what'd you see? <laughs> Dead body? <laughs> Domestic violence. We, it was oh, like, okay. And, and which is strange because like none of our parents were cops. You know, it's like we, we never saw. <laughs> <laughs> we just it was just like Indian people go through a lot. Yeah. In, uh, at least the generation above me went through a lot of shit, mm. and so like for them to not for them to be like, yeah, we don't need it. It was your parents. No, no, not my parents. Ah. But it was always it was always around. It was always lingering. Yeah. And so it would be like... But it, was, it was in your family. For sure. So seeing that made it like... I know that impacted me subconsciously. Like, mm. I don't remember shit of my childhood. And I should. Yeah. You think you blocked you it blocked out? It's probably out. just gone. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. Where, where the fuck is it? I think I got a few of those too. This repressed memories. Yeah. And I'm, I don't want them to come up. Because I think they're pretty dark. Yeah. You can hear more about it in Mark's new one-man show, Daddy Now. <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> it's a really, really strong one. <laughs> But like that, that made me like, I should talk to somebody. Like I don't have, I'm not like out punching people and hitting things, yeah. but like I know that's in me. Right. Like there's an anger in me for yeah. sure. I've never seen that side of you and and I, well, we don't know each other super well. Three more of these, baby. Yeah. We've got, but I've, I've gotten drunk with you before and you're not a bad drunk. And I think that's part that's of the true. problem too is like. You can use this shit as medicine. Mm-hmm. None of us are bad drunks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we can keep drinking. The bad drunks usually have to quit. I'm assuming your cousin who is an alcoholic, either it was affecting his life in some way or he was a bad drunk. He was not a bad drunk. That's the scary part. Yeah. Uh-huh. The, the big, some of the best, quote unquote, alcoholics you don't even know. Right. They're just like, for years, I mean, granted. So what made him quit? He hit uh, rock bottom. It was like, uh, it was like, mid pandemic where he was just like he was trying to quit himself and when you're an alcoholic tries to quit themselves they go cold turkey they go through withdrawal oh. withdrawal for an alcoholic for someone who's been drinking for a very long time is like you get you pass out and you get the shakes that's why i don't quit you know <laughs> keep going and, and uh <laughs> and, and he's just like he called me is like bro i need you to come here i'm like what's wrong he's like i i i, I just passed out in the bathroom mm. I'm like what and then we went down he told us all the shit it's like what the fuck like for years we didn't know like wow. a, like a like pints a day habit whoa and I was like, how the fuck are you functioning bro and then you know you got a kid on the way at the time it's like oh this you you have to change because this is not healthy and my cousin other cousins of the doctor was like yeah this is you on the path to being dead by 50 if you keep drinking like this because it's like we fuck around with this kind of stuff, but like the way he was drinking, it was like you you are drinking way too much, like, like a, a pint every yeah two hours or so. It's like you're gonna die. Yeah, that's crazy. You know, pint of liquor, pint, absolute vodka. Woo! Weird plug, but <laughs> drink up, guys. <laughs> Can't they, smell they on they your breath, everybody. Cool, <laughs> remember when Absolute had those really cool ads when it was like the oh, absolute yeah. like tough guy it would be like Steve McQueen, yeah. the absolute this, and then yeah. be like the absolute vodka, and you're like, I'm not gonna lie, for as far as ad sales go, mm-hmm. not not too shabby. No, no, we used to have they, them up on the wall. They had that. They had that campaign. Was it them or Smirnoff? Uh, would you have a drink with you? Oh shit! I don't want to hear that. No, <laughs> no, no I would not. That's why I drink. You yeah. fucks. <laughs> yeah. I hate myself. Yeah, the drink silences me. Yeah. 
<laughs> Damn. I remember when, uh, when Smirnoff took over for that, it was like the Bond mm -hmm. vodka, and I was like, slow down. Bond vodka? Yeah, no, it was like, oh, Bo James, like Bond. James Bond would order like a Smirnoff, and I'd be like, what is he, a 13-year-old girl? Yeah. Bond's drinking Smirnoff now? Come on. <laughs> no, you order fucking Goose or like some classy vodka if you're fucking Bond. Yes. Or some shit you never heard of. That's yeah. A top, top show. Some Polish-Russian cool shit. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Smirnoff, shaken, not stirred. Shut we had a... Land. That's my audition. <laughs> They're looking for a new guy. We need an Indian Bond. We do. Ooh, oh, that, we, we, that would be pretty Who slick. is the next... Bond is like one of those things where like and maybe like Idris Elba like aged out of it now because he would have been the cool choice I think because yeah because he was so fucking cool in Luther oh yeah so cool and he's se he's British too he's and he's sexy suave and, and he's like dapper. cool as fuck but you need like but they're probably gonna go younger because they want to franchise that shit mm -hmm. I think Ed Sheeran no. <laughs> um, I hope they go Dev Patel that's my vote Dev Patel who's James Dev? Bond he was in uh, his biggest role was a. Uh, uh, Slumdog Millionaire. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, yeah. My yeah, vote yeah, goes yeah. to uh, Dylan Mulvaney. I think <laughs> that she would make a great Bond. <laughs> Look at this beautiful man. Yeah, not too yeah. shabby. He's got to do it. Oh, yeah, better than Cal Penn. <laughs> <laughs> he's, uh, he's just too goofy. He's too silly. Yeah. No one's even mentioning him in the yeah. running for Bond. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm, thinking, uh, I'm trying to name all the Indians I know. What are we doing? <laughs> no one's mentioning him either. Well, hold That's on. That's true. What about... Uh, Aziz, <laughs> I'm just I'm just shouting. Brown Riz Ahmed would be great. Oh, I love that actor. Yeah. Oh, that's way better. He's yeah. hotter. He's suave, man. It's a suave dude. Yeah, that's a suave. Oh, he's the guy dude. in the Deaf movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, he's Sound good. Of music. Sound of Metal. Sound of Metal. Great he's a film. killer. That's a that's a Bond right but there. But he's he's short. Ah. I think he's like five eight or yeah, something. So was Tom Cruise. I was gonna work. say very good. Dustin Hoffman. Average Man, height. I was watching, by the way, great, such a classic. Tootsie was on TV the other day. Oh, That's yeah. That's such a funny movie, man. Great movie. Dustin Hoffman just fucking killed it in that yeah. movie. Yeah, drag. Drag? Yeah. Had yeah. A, had Band a in Nashville. Really? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> There's a new That's Bill. Funny. You can't watch Tootsie yeah. on the table. And We're shooting Bill the movie. Lee is like, I'm sorry, guys. We tried, but it's a really hurtful movie. No, uh, he kills it. It's such a funny movie. Mm, Jessica Lange was a fucking dime piece. Oh, so hot. She was great bone structure. I know I sound like a serial killer, Good but she, she had great uh, Firm bone skin. structure. <laughs> <laughs> Real taut skin. Indian Bond. We got something here. That would be fun. Yeah. It would never happen. The Brits would never allow it. But Ah, uh, true. Yeah. Oh, we do, are we working on bits? Now? You, so what's, give us a therapy bit you're working on. I think I did a lot of them. <laughs> oh yeah what do you got I'll, i got one so I, I was seeing a woman who uh this is the idea i have i don't know where to go with it quite yet but she told me we did that thing where we dig into the sexual past which is always a very smart game to play with yeah person. the body count no, no drama ever comes from that and uh she divulged that she slept with liam neeson once whoa and years ago i have a and, particular set of skills <laughs> i don't and uh, 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 he's got and, a huge dong by the way and, i don't know if you've heard that <laughs> pull it up she said he wasn't she said he wasn't How great you know about every okay. dude she dick. said it wasn't good at, uh, at whatever but uh, i heard i didn't go into that i've heard that too we didn't go into detail but here's the thing here's the angle i have yeah. I don't know if you ever watched uh, Schindler's List and got bummed out for a different reason. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. That's, that's great. There. And then something like this line didn't hit, but there's something like this where I'm like watching it like, hey, Oscar, you left one name off that list. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> you know what I mean? There's, yeah. there's got to be something. I think it's hilarious to watch, to like realize, because Schindler's List, I, I definitely, <laughs> stop pulling up pictures of him, for fuck's <laughs> sake. <laughs> Her virginity was taken. Oh. All right. <laughs> 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 sorry, sorry. No, I like this. It's Schindler's List thing for the there's you're upset there, right? for a different reason is great. And there's something about watching that movie where you're just like, this is uh It's funny to be like, wow, I never realized how sad this movie was. And you're like, we mean all the Jews, you're like, nah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, that's good. I don't know. I'm thinking there's something there though, right? Yeah, definitely. What, definitely. Do, you, what do you got, Marcus? All right, this this is a, a bit of a stretch, maybe, yeah. but I can't end this joke. It's hitting up top and it falls off a cliff. So I, I went to this party in Brooklyn, warehouse, rager, DJ, people dancing. I went with a buddy and he goes, man, it's a zoo in here. And I was like, it's weird that people say that because you ever been to a zoo? Pretty orderly. Mm. You know, it's just people walking around taking photos. A lot of animals sleeping. Yeah, a lot of sleeping animals. This is like, people always say that about a wild thing. This place is wild. It's a zoo. But the zoo is the opposite of wild. The wild is wild. 
and then I need an ending. Yeah, that part I, all hits. I've never, never seen a panda get taken out in a headlock. <laughs> did, yeah. Did you see a woman shitting in the corner? Just yeah. walk, oh, walk away <laughs> yeah, from it. Yeah, right. <laughs> By the way, it is like a zoo. What, are there children there? <laughs> I don't know. Also, like, uh, I went to an old folks home once, and yeah. it's sad. They're not allowed to leave. I'm like, this is a zoo. <laughs> yeah. oh, no. Maybe that's the end. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, there okay. okay. It's a zoo in yeah. here. They're going to die here? Yes. Oh. Yes. <laughs> They were put in here by, you know, their children. Yeah. Here's, held here's captive. A, the, the only difference between the old folks' home and the zoo is uh, the old folks' home, no one visits. Oh, Ooh. good tag. Good tag. All right. I love it. Hey. <laughs> well, Comedy. I, I, I was just trying to think of how you could tie Cuomo into that somehow killing all the old people, mm. but I, I don't see. I, I, haven't, I haven't made the leap yet. Yeah. Jokes are fucking fun. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> love I, jokes, dude. This is, a, this is an area I'm playing with, but... This is a true story. Like a few weeks ago, I went to Bloomingdale's. And there's like this middle aged white guy in there, and he's yelling at no one in particular, like literally just yelling at people, I need a tuxedo. <laughs> no one's helping me find. He's like, yell, yell, straight up yelling. Yeah. And I, I confronted him. I was like, bro, this, ain't, this is not the subway. You can't just be yelling at people. What the fuck yeah. are you doing? He's like, get away from me. You're being a bully right now. Mm hmm. And I, w I laughed because I was about to fucking twist his titties and shit. But <laughs> like, I try to do the right thing at all times. And and I walked away from this guy after just like laughing in his face. And and my therapist was like, "So what do you think you did wrong? You walked, you confronted him, you told him to calm down, you walked away." It's like I knew where the tuxedos were the whole time. Like I could, <laughs> I could just like go up the stairs, and make a left. Like, but I don't know, I don't know what the end is. Yeah, beyond like. What compelled me to confront him as opposed to telling him, hey, man, like, I'll help you. Right, right. What is it in me? That's the comedian. You know? You want the funny story. You, helping There's no is not justice funny. in being like, oh, it's right there. Yeah. Asshole. Yeah. There's no justice there. No. There's justice. Maybe the turn is that, like, yeah, you have you done this on stage yet? Yeah. And does it get a laugh when you go, I knew where they were the whole time? Yeah, but it, it doesn't feel complete. Right, right, right. right, right. You well, know? Also, something funny that this guy is the biggest asshole but he's trying to be formal right like yeah. i like the idea of like who's who's marrying your daughter sir this, yeah. this poor you know new boyfriend is fucked but this store's not that big man yeah what event is having you yes yeah. hopefully it's a funeral <laughs> uh, it's a tuxedo, though. yeah it's like yeah. he's the worst james bond ever i thought about i thought about i hope your gala gets canceled hope you gotta oh, wear a suit yeah like an asshole like but it's so where's the tuxedo but if you helped him he would have thought you worked there and then you'd be suiting this guy up for a tuxedo right, right. yeah <laughs> right and then he would have just gone on living his shitty entitled life exactly yeah. what, was, what did he look what was his vibe middle-aged white dude rolex on one wrist mm. french bulldog on the other damn it, like rolex on one of the french bulldogs wrists yes that <laughs> money and uh this guy was yeah. moneyed up not moneyed enough yeah. to be at bergdorf but money enough to be yelling at Bloomingdale's looking for a tuxedo. Right. It's like, who the fuck? What kind of ass? strange he accused you of being the bully when he's clearly yes. bullying the Yes. What did you say to him again? Projecting. I told um, I just told him, like, hey, just don't yell at people. Yeah. Just be polite. Like, what the mm. fuck are you doing here? Like, yeah. He, he's conf he said, don't talk to me like that. You don't know who I am. Could be funny to be like, and they say, uh, hey, don't yell at people. It's not nice. You're like, I should have known that was a bad move just from my relationship. But uh, or something like that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But that doesn't work with women either. When you say, hey, don't yell, that doesn't stop no, things. No, no, calm down. Yeah, you ever tell a woman to calm down? They don't calm down. They don't calm down, no. yeah. People don't like that. Yeah. What if, I, what if I find, what if I go to where the tuxedos are and put one on? Like, this is where they are. Like, I, oh, like, yeah. I don't know what the end is. Yeah. Because you know, you know, you have a bit where you're like, oh, it, the. The bones are there. You want the the button at the yeah, end. Yeah, like I gotta ribbon. close it up and yeah, walk out of the store with the tux in my bag, kind of thing. Like, <laughs> that's yeah. what it feels like, huh? And I'm adding that into the therapy chunk of just like you know, a, a therapy material. Just like I am trying to be. I didn't help him. <laughs> yeah, there's something funny about like I didn't help him. Like, yeah, that, mm. that, that, I think bringing it back to you is where where the joke is gonna end up being. You know. So where, why did you confront him? Part of me was, well, part of me was like, he's just yelling at people. And another part of me was one of the staff that walked past him because it seemed like the staff was ignoring him. Like he was just like a fucking lunatic mm -hmm. and he'd just been a dickhead to everybody. And one of the staff was like this probably 70 year old Indian guy who walked past him and just didn't say anything. And I guess part of me was triggered by that. Like my grandpa used to work at Macy's. Right. And I was just like, 
what the fuck are you just yelling at people in the store? Yeah. Like, I've never been in a situation where I'm looking for something. That's and, you, like, and you belittle people. And I belittle people because I'm not getting help. I'm like, I'm of the mind, like, I'll look for shit myself until for the last second. Or I'll just pick, hey, excuse me, sir. Yeah. What, what You'd be decent. Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, I have a bit of my last special where a woman was just being horrible to a TSA mm. agent and Vita and I confront her and we just start talking shit to her. Uh-huh. And it's like, yeah, there's, there's, it's about justice. The punchline is justice. So it's like something about wh- who the fuck do you, th- like there should be rules to get to wear a tuxedo. Like, we're sorry, sir. We can't sell you a tuxedo. It's almost like getting kicked oh, out of a store. Oh yeah. yeah. Interesting. You're not allowed to wear that because mm-hmm. you're not, you're not sophisticated enough. Yeah, you're you're a low class piece of shit. You don't get a fucking tuxedo. The suits are over there, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah the sweatpants are down the hall. <laughs> so we're sorry, we can sell you Crocs or sweatpants at best. But yeah, that's, yeah, this should be a, a politeness bra. Like at a, a roller coaster, there's a height. This should be politeness. This is this isn't it. <laughs> no, I'm, to help I'm, out here. I'm I'm fishing now. That I'm that fishing. that is that is something you could add into it. For yes, sure. yes. But I think it's about you. I think that's the bit. It, it, it comes back to you. Yeah, some misdirection, like, and then I found the tuxedos and I married his daughter or right. something. Somewhere he loses. I took his dog and I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what it is. Oh, took his like, dog and fucked it. <laughs> Guy who can't find right a on Rolex line. time. Yeah, maybe you steal his Rolex at the end. You know? Huh. Well, this has been fun. Ah oh, shit! I know, I know that. Well, look, we I, don't solve all the fucking jokes. I know there's here. something. No, no, there's definitely it's something. Just start there. a conversation to get the mind working. Too. Yeah, I mean, like, like that Liam Neeson joke ain't ready for stage either, but it's something there. You're on the it's way. Close. I it's like close. it with yeah. the with the the worst thing Schindler's about the Schindler's List. list. Yeah. Do you, can I ask when you make a reference like that? How, how confident are you that? So your how old are your crowds? I think they're pretty young. I, I mean, they're, they're all over, yeah, they're all over the place. Uh-huh. But you know, you, you get a little bit of everything when you make a when you make a reference to a movie that's n- 1994. Yeah, Dude, well, that's a, that is like that too, the you know? that is like the Holocaust reference, though. Yeah, yeah. I feel like young people know that movie. It's like an essential movie. It's also a Spielberg it's a movie. It's a school yeah. assignment. I know. Yeah, really? Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We had, we had to see. We didn't see Schindler's List in school. We saw The Pianist. Oh, also yeah. great, yeah, great with movie. Adrian Brody. True story. Yeah. Well, you know what's fucked up is he actually fingered her too. Uh, I'm kidding. I'm trying, to think of a, I'm trying to think of an ending to this joke. Uh, one of my security um, codes is Schindler's List because it's one of my first movies I ever saw oh. in the movie theater. Oh, you mean wow. in the, like the bank drop? You know they question? said, yeah, yeah, they have those what's questions. What's your first movie? You ever movie? Saw? Schindler's oh, List. Yeah. That's dark. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's your first Mason, movie. Liam Neeson's great in that. It's a great movie. Great movie, but it's three hours of Holocaust death. Yeah, right. and a lot of violence. But, yeah, and I think to... that's why it was so interesting, because it was too premature, it was too early that's to do something. That's my critique of the Holocaust movie. That... Too much violence. <laughs> just... Yeah, it was I too early for that. I could have done the violence. Oh, yeah. It's too my early for you to see that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and Understand when it. it came out, it was like, oh, my God, this is, you know, rich. Well, oh, when, yeah. you're young, when you're young and they, and they show you those movies, you're like, Holy shit! This is my intro, but that's it's good as a kid to be shocked. Mm-hmm. You I should, guess you should. No, it Tell is. Tell that to my babysitter. <laughs> <laughs> I think it is good. I think you should be shocked and and horrified because that's what it is. It's, yeah, it's, it's I mean, it's what you should story. watch. You should watch slavery and Holocaust movies and be like, what the fuck? Of course, you should be in like sixth or seventh grade and, and be horrified. Well, what do you think about like taking out the N word and Mark Twain and shit? That's Travis, shocking. I, don't know. I, I what do you I, think? It's tough. I don't. I don't like Even editing. I don't. Like I don't editing, like editing either. I don't like editing work. Reality is real. It happens. Reality is real. It's a good thing your girlfriend didn't see uh, date Chuatel Edge of Four, because then you'd be. Wait, say that again. I he know it's ma- tough work. He tough was making it on my mouth. He was making a twelve years a slave <laughs> yeah. job. Yeah. Oh. But I bumbled Chuatel Edge of Four. Doesn't I mean, trip a, off the tongue. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, you really uh, fucked up, dude. Hard name to say. <laughs> that, was, that was 12 years of punchline right there. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I thought you had a stroke. I don't know what was going on. died on this yeah. episode, guys. <laughs> so did the joke. Uh, <laughs> well, dude, this has been a great app, man. We're happy you came on. Thank and, you uh, get, we plug, some, plug some gigs. There we up. go. Oh, my, and my, the new special. My new special is called Lucky Lefty. Mm. It should be out. April 30th. Hell yeah. On YouTube. Please go watch it. 
All right. And uh, yeah, we love you, man. It's great to Thank see you. Thank you so much. Yeah, have, good uh, stuff. Fun definitely, time. Definitely support and follow Nimesh Patel. And congrats on the therapy. Yeah. Oh, thank you, man. True. I know he's, it sounds joking around, but truly, like, it's not easy to do that shit. Yeah. yeah. And thank it you. means you're, you know, I'm maturing, progressing. I don't think I'm going to stop touching kids with this. this is just... <laughs> well, look, it's too much fun. It feels good, is yeah. the problem. Yeah. And we've been demonetized. <laughs> so, yeah. a lot of gigs coming up for me. What do we got? Jeez, uh, when did this come out? Late May. Late May, so go to late May. Here for Can you. you read it? My eyes Yeah, hurt. June 4th in Richmond, uh, and then Greensboro, North Carolina, Asheville, Charlotte, North Carolina, Knoxville, Tennessee on June 8th, Memphis, Tennessee, and we got Birmingham, Chattanooga, all over the place. I don't know Nashville. when this comes out for Memphis, but uh, no, tickets you... still available. Yeah. <laughs> God damn, you're working, man. Look and at this then shit. The Paramount Theater in Denver. Oh, that one. That that's one. That's a that, great room. We added there, so that's going to keep. Added please there. come. Yeah. And, uh, uh, Santa Fe, San Antonio, Houston. I love San Antonio. I do too. I have like a weird love for uh, San Antonio. I was I was there last week. It's a oh, yeah? it's like dude, it's there's so something about fun. the Mexican food's incredible. Yeah. The culture's kinda of, it's like a cool city. When next time you're in San Antonio, go to um Best Quality Daughter. Oh. Asian restaurant. Mm. Uh run by a chef who I think was in New York and then moved to San Antonio. A little awkward for a Chinese place. It's, no, Don't it's, they kill the daughters? <laughs> <laughs> no, they it's, kept this one. It was a quality I, I daughter. So. They kept the, they kept the best, it's, it's, daughter. It's a very good restaurant. They oh, and support Chinese. our good All friend right. Stavros Halkias, who Matt Salakis directed it four Whoa. nights in New York City. Nice. You know, we love Stavi, baby. Already, here. Uh, I think it's 600,000 views. Ooh. Crazy. In two days. That guy pushes numbers, man. He did yeah. six of the Vic, six of the Wilbur, whatever. He is killing it. That's free on YouTube beast. if you go to Stavros's page. And we have some dates for more. And we too. love them. All right, I'll be in Australia. Come on out, say hello. Uh, Sydney, Brisbane, Adelaide, you name it, doing a theater tour out there. Then announcing a theater tour this summer with, uh, I don't know, Outback or one of those. So yeah. uh, come on out, say That's hello, marknomancomedy.com. Let's thank our bartender. Lisa. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank and, you. Uh, guys. list. Make make sure to buy uh, Bodega Cat Whiskey, bodegacatwhiskey.com. By the time this episode's out, maybe it's fucking legal in New York, finally. Pray na la. It's about fucking time. Everybody's asking about it. You we gotta, did our part. You yeah. got to register it? Yeah, it's a whole legal red tape, mumbo jumbo, jumping through hoops. But we're getting there. We so thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. For Get yourself a guys. tuxedo. <laughs> Have a good one. Sunday's the day for my nap.